Okay. I wonder if I could ask you a short methodological question. I won't take too much of your time. My uh, my voice stamina is not high right now. Um, what what's up? Cool with that, Abby? Yeah, you can ask me a question. Yeah. So it just it concerns your uh, Swords of Iron stats. It's just a part of this that kind of confuses me a little bit, and I was wondering if you can sort of clear up mm -hmm. how you derive these figures. So. Yeah. When I see here, <clears throat> you look up the uh, total killed in Gaza, you get 29,000. I think you just take that from a single source, and that's fine. In order to get uh, attributable, attributable, pardon me, civilians killed, mm -hmm. uh, you deduct from mm -hmm. that 29,000 the total average um, of the estimate uh, killed militants. Mm -hmm. Now, what confuses yeah. me a little bit is that you derive this mm -hmm. uh, estimate by comparing uh, the WSJ reports the IDF mm -hmm. reports, and the Hamas reports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the IDF reports are double the Hamas and the mm -hmm. WSJ reports, which means the average you're deriving... Um, I'm just well, a little... Well, I'm, I'm perplexed, exactly I'm perplexed very quickly. Now, yeah. uh, very quickly. My question yeah. is, I don't know mm -hmm. why you would be deriving an average mm -hmm. to arrive at this figure in the first place, mm -hmm. given that there is a radical outlier here, mm -hmm. namely one of the inputs mm -hmm. is double that of the other two. So this is so this is actually not a radical outlier. In fact, if you look at across, I've I've looked across two hundred percent, hobby. Yeah, that's actually not an outlier. In fact, usually, in fact, that's actually fairly good. Uh, usually, you get like a thousands percent. You get orders of magnitude difference in, in there are many cases, and those are outliers. And then no, you but... have to like figure out, okay, there's a lot more work you have to do. Um, one thing I'll just I'll, I'll actually so no I mean this is a question I've gotten multiple times it's the same response and anyone who's familiar with like actually doing work in this field uh, will tell you that it's very very common to get two estimates and one is two hundred percent the other yeah but you wouldn't um, use an average then right you'd use a median absolutely you, you wouldn't use an average then oh, because no, no, it's no, sensitive no, to would... radical outliers that's two hundred percent difference no 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 it's not it's not it's like you, not, you've I, raised I you've raised the you raised wait. the number of militants killed by over two thousand of the right, estimates of the WSJ and and uh, Hamas. Uh, well, excuse me one second, one yeah. second. Just as a point of process, if you ask me a question and I answer it, I expect like not, not you not it. to do that. Okay. So, um, I actually don't see the that estimate as an outlier. So the estimate from the D WSJ was actually not an outlier at the time it was released. At the time it was released is actually it was actually um, it was a, a range that the IDF uh, estimate fell in within. And I just average the range. The, the estimate is over. Okay. A do, do you mind if I? In fact, I, I'm dropping. I, I, I'm dropping I, the estimate. I understand. Do you, do you uh do yeah. you know what I mean by an outlier in this case? I well, if you're not talking about like the standard statistical notion, then you can tell me what you mean. But well, it, on the standard, that's that's, that's why that's why I'm perplexed though, because yeah. this is this is once again two hundred percent. It's sort of like if you were looking for the average price of a house, and you included in the yeah, range. So I'm, I'm, a ten thousand so dollar house, you what, a twenty thousand yeah, so dollar house, not, and then so a, first of all, it's. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, it's not. So first of all, it's not. It's only. It's because the averages are the estimates are coming from different time points. So that's one. Uh, if you so the the WSJ estimate is an old estimate. If if, I, if they updated it now, the number would be much higher. The, it's a that estimate happened over a month ago, and that estimate was. Wait. Wait. So the the IDF arranged, estimate that you're, yeah. if I may, very quickly. So the IDF estimate that you're deriving yeah. the average from with the Hamas estimate and the WSJ mm -hmm. estimate. These are from different time periods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, I just am doing an update right now as we speak, and I dropped the WSJ estimate for being antiquated. Because the IDF, uh, so right now you have, um, it's just going to be the IDF estimate and the Hamas estimate that are going to be averaged. The WSJ estimate is from like, is from over a month ago. And that, and the IDF estimate wasn't 12,000 when so that estimate have, was released. So you, just have, so you just have two estimates. You just have the IDF estimate and the yeah. Hamas estimate. Yeah, which is even more common. The most common thing you find in looking at different battles is you have two different estimates by two different belligerents. I'm just perplexed and, again as to why you would side bother side. why you would bother averaging the two, since obviously the discrepancy is going to be due to reporting reliability and not um, and not some sort of well, methodological do, limitation. Well, I do two different. Well, I do a number of different things. So this, the first thing to do absolutely would, on, on my view, would be to average them because I think the truth is somewhere in between the two, and the fairest thing to do. When, but the, but somewhere in between the two is a hundred percent difference. Yeah, that's fine. I, that, then the other thing I would do, yeah, that's actually very fine. The other thing I, I do massive. is a sensitivity analysis. Not really. Yes, the other it is thing really. I would, that not, is really big. Is, I'm going to give you an it, example of how massive it is. It has okay? to do, wait, so it, Poland. Okay, don't, no, 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 stop, right, stop, 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 because you, you, stop. It's not massive with respect to how it affects the inference. It but it is. In order to affect Poland, World War II, my dude, 32 million to... people, 800,000 troops on the Polish uh, side. That 800,000 you know defrays okay, the Holocaust. Just... 
like you, sorry, I don't think you understand how big how big a difference this is. No, like this actually so kills your data. In order to, so mathematically, in order to affect you're deriving an average from two inputs, my dude. No, <laughs> what the are reason, you doing? The reason, the reason it doesn't <laughs> is because I ran the sensitivity analysis just using the Hamas numbers, and it doesn't affect the inference. You ran the, 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 the sensitivity numbers. The other input is two hundred percent the size of the Hamas numbers. I understand. Yeah, that's fine. That's actually that's fine. that's really not fine, my conclusion. dude. You're using you're using it that number change. by itself to subtract the number right, of militants. All right, so you're not okay. Look, I can show this mathematically to you if you'd like. How it, you end up at show the same it conclusion. mathematically the what? Order of magnitude. Yes. Uh, that well, doesn't it, that doesn't you know, overcome that doesn't overcome that doesn't overcome the fact you can, that you are averaging out a radical outlier. Like you don't you don't do that. A, I don't know what you mean by well, a radical outlier. Radical one number is one number is massively larger than the other representative, so that the yeah, the average you get is fairly, skewed in that direction. Actually, yeah, that's that's, a basic, mean, that's, well, a, basic, that's a basic that's a basic that's a basic error. This is this is why you, this is well, why you would I definitely don't know. Well, now I definitely don't know what you mean by skew either. Certainly no statistic, standard statistical notion. But anyway, anyone familiar with the field knows that this is actually very standard. Um, if you actually look, and do, look at all the different you estimates for any different battle yourself, and this, and having one estimate that's actually two hundred percent the outlier is actually good. That's actually very. No, 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 but not one that. estimate. Not one estimate <laughs> that's two hundred. It's not two hundred percent the outlier. Yes, it's the two hundred percent is the yeah, outlier. Two hundred percent. No, it's two. Uh, one one estimate being two. One estimate of three. Divided. One estimate of three is double the other two. One. No, no it's not double the other two. It's it's from a different time point. You're just confused. But then why are you averaging them out? They're it's, not. It's they're, a, not sorry, I'm, they're not. They're not. They're not like from any, the same. I'm not. I'm not anymore. The next update's going to drop the they're double estimate because. It's but antiquated. why would you do that? Why would you do that initially? You were arguing this was the basis for saying this. Because it was that over, what was happening in Gaza wasn't, wasn't a genocide. No, it's even less of a genocide if I don't do that. <laughs> if I drop the WSA estimate, the what are you what are you talking about? That doesn't that what? If I drop the if I drop the WSA yeah, if you if you if you if if you drop if you drop the WSJ estimate, yes, it's, it's an antiquated estimate that would be higher if they ran the same estimate now it, contemporaneously with the IDF estimate and the Hamas estimate. That's an, yes, that's, a, that's an immaterial value. difference. In it's fact, still two hundred percent. It's still wait, it's still wait, a little wait, under two hundred percent. Then that doesn't help you. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, what? hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You don't know what the new if they ran the new estimate contemporaneously. It would it, would, it could be the Hamas estimate would be the outlier. By no, but you're the. You're I, I know because you just told me. You just told me that the IDF estimate was not contemporaneous with the other two estimates. I'm confused now as to why no, you're the other, them no, in the first no, place. No, 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 no. But moreover, where are you deriving? Where are you deriving? Excuse me. Where are you deriving an average? Where are you Where are you deriving an average? Where are you deriving an average from two inputs valued at roughly six thousand against one at twelve thousand? Double it. That's exactly what you said. That's not what I said. So what I just know what I said is <clears throat> I didn't see the IDF estimate is not contemporaneous with the other two. I said the WSJ estimate is not contemporaneous with the other two. So the dub so so what I'm dropping is the dub is the WSJ estimate okay. because it's, that's an, that's antiquated. That's and antiquated. then what you actually yes, it's ant, it's at some I in fact when I did the update. I said this. In fact, I said this in my methodology. I said, like, "Hey, I'm I'm at the point where I'm questioning if I'm going to leave the WSJ figure because it's getting old at this point. And if it was like done, that it was done more, the, the number would be um, the number would be significantly higher. And it was, by the way, the n the number that the WSJ gave was in line with the IDF numbers at the time. Like when the, if you looked at when the WSJ estimate was released, and right. the IDF numbers were so the I they were. <laughs> they 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 were within they they it was within the range of the WSJ estimate. It wasn't an, it wasn't an outlier. It's just that one estimate stayed the same because they didn't update it, and the other estimate got updated. That's all it was. Okay, but that doesn't matter because you're still using again an average between one not figure any, and another one that is two hundred percent its value. Well, that so okay. So now the the question is. If, um, if, well, it just makes it makes this it makes this average it makes this average in determining there's the number of civilians killed statistically worthless. There's a way to test. Well, it would be militants in this case, not not civilians, but the no way civilians. To, uh, you subtracted the militants civilians. to get the number of civilians yeah, and killed. And there's a way. Yes. Yep. And there's a way to test that as well. There's a way to test how much that affects the inference, which is by taking just the Hamas numbers and calculating the civilians killed and militants killed just by the Hamas numbers, and you still get the inference that the probability that one is committing, a, uh, Israel's committing a genocide to be exceptionally low, not to the same, well, so instead of like That's stupid for two, that's stupid for two reasons. 
But one that's, moment, that's a, one moment. But that's already like that's, that's already a meaningless sense. Are you here to answer a question? Or are you here to just are you here to grandstand on statistics <sighs> you clearly don't understand? So well, I'm I'm, I'm not I'm not really here to listen to the monologue. 0. I want to ask a question then get clarity as, as I Well if you know, it doesn't seem saying. like you're interested well it doesn't seem like you're interested in that. But if you but if you are interested in that it, no, look, I think I think you, you made you I think you made I think you made a laughable statistical you, inference. Okay. Um, well you don't okay, look like, listen, like, like listen, laughable. You look look. All right. So look is it, the difference between if you if you end up getting a difference an ultimate inference that gives you 0. 0.0001 uh, versus 0. 0.002 that's a 200% difference imagine I mean, if you imagine so Abby, I'm, the other. just just to illustrate imagine if you averaged out the number killed in the holocaust in this way okay between the nazi party All right. like you see how this the doesn't make is, sense it, it would, no, it does make sense. You're no, just not doesn't. understanding what the relata is. What the you're just not understanding what the how it. You're just not understanding the purpose of it. It make whether it makes sense. Oh, or the, not, the purpose of it is trans. The purpose of it is transparent. You, right. you immediately okay. went out to try and justify have what this thing and goes. Have like, a good one. Coward. Have a good. Have a good one Sunday. <laughs> like when you ready to take a statistics class, stats <clears> 101, Let me know. All right. Go fuck later. yourself. Causes cancer. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. sort of, you know, I, you know, I use. Hey, paper. I, I'm sorry to cut yeah. you off, but Sunday came back, so I'm, you guys mm -hmm. can return to this. I, I want it because Sunday and paper have the same political leanings, and paper has like a master's in a stats area, and I think that paper agrees with some of what Avi's saying. So I would be curious. If, Av if, if Paper could give his assessment of what Avi's saying to Sunday. Now, Avi, you could prompt Paper if Paper's not got it fresh in his mind anymore. Um, Sunday also might not be able to mic, but he's listening, though. Yeah, yeah so, so, so I, I, I came... Yeah, so I, so I came a little late <clears throat> while you were Avi, talking. you took off and came back as soon as I, come, as soon as I leave. Sorry, uh, go on. Please, paper. So yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. step away from the mic, but paper is like super passive and friendly, and we'll just like, I will stop be, I will be nice. I'll be nice to paper. Him, so I'll let him speak. Yeah, some one of the mods just make sure paper gets to talk and doesn't end up getting cucked. Okay, all right. Yeah, so uh, you know, I kind of came in. It was you know, it was heated. It was heated. It was like statistics discussions back and forth. You know, obviously this project has a lot of going. You know, a lot of inputs a lot of assumptions a lot of models outputs a lot of data it goes back and forth and then there's a lot of political implications and obviously that like how you you know how you interpret it how you see it it could be it could be you know it's it's pretty like hectic right it's a it, you know it's a war like it's a big it's a big situation so i came in late people were already kind of upset or they seemed upset like so what is like the major I mean, like technical issue that people are having, and maybe I can at least give my two cents on it. I, you know, I, yeah. you know, I, I, I do statistics, but I'm, I'm not like I know everything, and so I can only give you my like perception on it. But like, I, I'd be yeah, happy but... to kind of go through like I can give it to you. I can give it to you pretty quickly point. if you like. Sure, sure, yeah. Sure. So, in order to uh, make his uh, low estimate of the number of civilians killed in Gaza. Um, Avi uh, uses three, and we can reduce it to two um, inputs. So we have the number of militants killed uh, according to the IDF, the number of militants killed according to the WSJ, and the number of militants killed according to Hamas. Apparently we can cut out the WSJ. So the number of militants killed by the IDF, uh, the estimate is 12,000. Number of militants killed by Hamas, 6,000. It derives the average uh, with the, the third input, 8292. 8,292, and then he subtracts that from the total number of uh, reported killed in Gaza, 29,092, to get a total number of civilians killed at 20,800. Um, this, this strikes me as sort of intrinsically absurd. Now, he says he ran a sensitivity analysis on this. I am, I am very curious as to what that involved. Among other things, I am curious if he took count of, for example, the, uh, the changing ways in which militants are identified and tallied by the IDF, so on and so forth. Um, I'm, I'm quite certain he hasn't actually looked into that too much, but I, I am curious. But that, that's fundamentally the issue, because how you generate this uh, very high number of 8,292 is by averaging between one figure, the Hamas estimate, and, and a, a radical outlier between that and, and a third one, which I, I'm assuming... Um, 
was given there so that you have three data points. Um, assuming that's why the WSJ was there despite it being outdated uh, at the time of the, this, this graph was put together. Yeah, so so the the issue here mm -hmm. is, um, so in this particular analysis, for each unit of analysis, he has to come up with a relative risk, right? So he needs these four estimates of, or, or yeah, he needs these four numbers to sort of calculate these relative risks. And so there is a pretty good assumption, or it's a pretty reasonable assumption to assume that each one of these cells is measured with error, right? Like obviously it's, you know, it's a war and it's it's gonna be probably very difficult at each unit of analysis. Oh, for this conflict, for this one, for this battle, this battle, this battle, to estimate those four perfectly. And so then the idea is he is coming up with a particular assumption of how he's going to estimate that for each unit of the analysis. And so it sounds like, you know, he's he's taking the average of the two. So there I guess there's two numbers, there's gonna be conflict, and they're they could be pretty close to each other or they could be pretty pretty radically off. And so then the yeah. And and so then the question is what is the appropriate sort of measure for this particular unit? And can he apply, I think, like a, this, a, a, a standard measure across all of the unit of analyses? Because he probably doesn't want to say, oh, well, I'm going to take Hamas's numbers in this conflict, but then I might take the IDF numbers in this conflict, and then I might take that in that conflict. Well, so this he, is all, this is all in Iron to, Swords, right? Pardon? This is all in Iron Swords. This is all just the... We're just talking about the figures given for the single conflict. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And, well, well cause, cause it, again, it's important for the conflict, but I think since he's sort of doing analysis across conflicts, he probably has to have some sort of decision rule of how he's going to, like, apply. Because he probably doesn't want to just arbitrarily pick a rule for each conflict as to what numbers he does. He probably wants a standardized procedure that you know, can have issues, you know, obviously it's not correct, whatever number he picks, but he has to come up with well, something. His procedure, sort of... He gives his sources in the graph. So his procedure appears to be to go to Reuters, to go to WSJ.com and just to get the reported numbers from there. Right. 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 But I, but I mean, in terms of like when there's sort of a dispute between if three groups say different numbers, you know, what is sort of going to be the standard way of handling what is like the number that he's going to put into his particular model. Yeah, of course. And so, you know, it, like averaging tends to be a pretty reasonable sort of move across the board. But then to your point, well, you can imagine that if you have an, you know, you have one or two numbers, presumably you'd probably want to have more or you would probably want like a weighted average, or you might want to well, see a major, what a major factor in this particular conflict, and, and the reason why these numbers are interesting, why people are discussing them in the first place, is precisely because the radical disparity and the motivated reasoning behind all the parties providing the numbers um, is suggestive that, uh, frankly, none of them are really trustworthy. Hamas has a vested interest in a particularly low number of militants versus civilians being the international read on how many people are being killed, but by the same token, the IDF has a vested interest in the number of militants being killed being relatively high. Um, and so to get an average between those two, it, it's it's combining two suspect numbers and then using that to, to diminish the total number of civilians killed. That strikes me as uh, astonishingly um, irresponsible by itself. And, and once again, like one of the reasons for the IDF's very high estimates, well, one of the things that may be fitting into that is that recently, for instance, they upgraded um, how they... Uh, how they identify Hamas operatives. Um, they switched from uh, suspected Hamas operatives to referring to them as junior Hamas operatives. And so what they what they will what they've been doing is they've been bombing houses of quote unquote junior Hamas operatives so that Hamas operatives on paper are being killed. But these more or less satisfy the identical conditions of people who are merely suspected of being Hamas operatives. Combine that with the fact that they're in the government and everybody interfaces with Hamas operatives at some level as a result, like you can see how those numbers would be suddenly widely inflated. Um, additionally, like 
uh, not even additionally. I, 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 I just think the example just, just screams to be made. It's imagine if you were to compare, for example, estimates of the total number of deaths from the Holocaust between people who were sympathetic to the Nazi party and people who weren't, you're going to get a, an average that is wildly, wildly, um, unrepresentative and as a misrepresentative and as, as a consequence of that, you're going to be giving a lot of propagandistic fodder to people who are very much in favor of that number being higher. That that's a, that's a bad thing to do. And so, okay. Am so I, I think sense? I, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making sense. Yeah. So, so the point that you're making is that, um, even if you average, it <clears throat> seems like consistently there are sort of these factors that are going in that are pushing certain estimates farther away from sort of the truth. Well, that right? would be that and would that, be why you would that'd be why we do a sensitivity analysis on your on your data. But the the problem is, um, a I don't I don't see this anywhere, so I don't know how he's actually how he's doing this, like what what he's actually putting it through to get that. But secondly, um, he's just taking that raw average. And he's just subtracting that from the total number of civilians killed in Gaza. Total number, uh, yeah, total number of uh, people killed in Gaza and just generating the civilian death toll from that. That's, that's absurd. <laughs> and then comparing it to Hiroshima. Look, relative risk. It's, it's pretty good, guys. It's, All right, so can I, can I just give my response to paper? <clears throat> not to, not to Sunday, but my response to paper? Jesus. Sure. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things. Um, yeah, the response is several fold. Um, first off, when I go across the battles, uh, in terms of like subtracting total uh, killed uh, from militants, average militants killed uh, to get civilians killed, I don't see how that's absurd at all. In fact, that's that's just a decision rule I've done across all battles to make the comparison standard. Um, in fact, in many cases, that's the only really way you can get the number of militants. In terms of like the... Um, discrepancy between the two estimates that's actually not not only is that not uh uh striking it's actually i suspect it's actually like on the low end in terms of how how much of a percent difference there is typically when i uh, there's 66 uh, events in the data set right now and commonly you see not only like one uh 200 percent one value of the other you see it more than that. You see like five, five, five hundred percent, six hundred percent. Sometimes it's like an order of ma like a, a tenfold difference. You shouldn't average those either. And, and one, once, just one second. Sorry, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking I don't care. to. You. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't interject. I didn't interject when you were talking. Yeah, just to, to, to prevent it going off the rails. Let yeah, let's <laughs> let Avi make like complete his whole point to paper because we did let Sunday go for as long as you wanted there, and then yeah. we'll kind of let paper and Sunday pick up. But like if Avi's just supplying his take yeah. for paper to assess, he should be able to complete it. I think. Well, yeah. Avi, uh, Avi dove Michael. last time mid sentence well, my so, goal, and then he comes no, back I, as I, did, I, leave, stayed, so. I stayed i stayed well, i stayed okay, i stayed here the whole I, time I, actually that's not true that's okay. not true i stayed here the whole time Rega regardless just let's okay. let you complete what you're saying to paper though that's, yeah i'm that's, trying that's, to i'm trying to complete yeah yeah I'm, I'm trying to complete what i'm saying as someone who knows statistics okay cool um yeah so the so it's actually um relatively to the other points of the data set it's it's actually pretty good but also the sensitivity analysis shows it doesn't really even matter in terms of the changing the conclusion so the sensitivity analysis i did paper was i just said okay let's just run with the hamas numbers uh, so basically let's just use six thousand and you basically get a relative risk of around 20. and if you re recall the bayesian inference that i did with comparing genocides and contested genocides and converting them to the log standardized to log to standardize the, uh, the that bell curve distribution and calculated how expected on the prob probability of the hypothesis that is the genocide is being committed. Uh, when I when I made the claim that this is the strongest evidence that I've seen uh, in terms of the numbers that Israel is not committing a genocide, the relative risk was less than twenty at that point. It was sixteen point something. Now, if I just go with the Hamas numbers, the relative risk is twenty instead of thirty point something. And so. The point is just that, okay, like if you take an issue, you it's an over-determination response. Like, okay, well, you, you may take an issue with one of the estimates, but I can just go with what, what I can what we could presumably agree, as was mentioned in this conversation, which would be the low ball estimate, and use that as a steel man. You say, okay, let's just say the Hamas numbers are right. The inference still follows. It goes through to the conclusion. It may be a difference of uh, two hundred percent. But if that ends up being zero point zero zero one versus zero point zero zero two, I'm fine with that either way. The point is made. 
I mean, you also don't All understand right. how you also don't understand like, how paper. genocide works. The Bosnian genocide, for example, took place over a span okay. of, I think three to four years. I I'm just that looking was for papers 000. assessments. Sorry. So at this I'm juncture, the rate assessment? is actually. You know, yeah, on, I'm looking for papers. Well, well yeah, here let's yeah, let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah. go in order. Let's let's let paper assess, and then we'll pass to Sunday yeah. for as long as Sunday mm -hmm. wants. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. Yeah, that's bring that's out... fair with you. Yeah, Sunday. That's, that's fine, yeah. isn't it? Oh, I don't yeah, because I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think. I don't think. Anymore. I don't think you merit any such considerations. I'm just playing this out for as long as it will go. Okay. Yeah, well, but paper does, right? Paper's been nice to you. Fairly. Paper's friendly to everybody. Yeah, but but so I want to take Sunday's point because I think Sunday so Sunday made the first point and then Avi you kind of responded, but then I think there's some miscommunication about the sensitivity analysis and I want to help maybe bridge that gap between you two and mm -hmm. then maybe you could talk about you know you could do pot shots and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so so I think Sunday is making he's he's making he's making a fair point. He's basically saying that the variance. So and and you know and you you responded but I'm I'm just going in in order. He, he's making the points that the variance between the two estimates is so grand that there is there there has to be some sort of third way of trying to sort of measure between that averaging is probably not the best thing to do given that there's such a wide discrepancy that there probably has to be some sort of adjudication more than just a standard procedure of oh we're going to average it because averaging sort of assumes yeah there's going to be some biases there's going to be some you know designation of what's a civilian what's what's a combatant but you know they'll roughly be around each other you know there'll be some measurement error so let's just average them together and that should be the procedure he's making the case that and, and i think he was kind of making the case that you know it seems like the idf is is sort of almost to almost to an to such a large degree that they're labeling people as combatants um you know they're labeling potentially people that we would reasonably think are civilians as combatants to the point that that av even averaging is sort of pushing it it's 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 coming up with an unreasonable number because you're averaging together the IDF and Hamas estimates that the, that the IDF estimates are so large yeah. and so gross that even that averaging procedure, which is you know suspect at best, is now even sort of going in the wrong direction. And so that's sort of the the it's actually I don't know worse than that. Um, the uh, yeah. the system they have in place right now actually gives them quotas, which means that there is a direct incentive for the people who are responsible, um, for example, for targeting Hamas operatives, uh, to find those Hamas operatives. It's not even necessarily a propagandistic number. It, it, it literally is a systemic issue that they are over-generating um, representatives of, of viable Hamas targets. So yeah, this over-generation. And, and so then, so the first question I would just ask, and, and I'm, I'm asking rhetorically, because I'm gonna ask and then I'm gonna keep going, so. Um, the rhetorical question I would ask is, I would like to see as a separate graph, sort of uh, basically for each one of these numbers, I it would be really nice to see this sort of ratio um, of when there's sort of two numbers that are in dispute or possibly three numbers. I think it'd be harder with three numbers with a graph. But what what on, what's the average difference between two numbers when they're in dispute? And... Um, that you know that that in itself i think would be an interesting graph that you would put as maybe like an appendix or something like that yep. because you, that that is that is something that's going to come up is that hey you decided to do this averaging when there's these two party in disputes um some papers might say well you can't do that or some papers you have to do something else or they might say you need to come up with a third source or we know and that paper, paper what would you say yeah. what would you say if i did that and it turned out that like the ratio between the two estimates was just in wholly in line with like the other battles broadly with some outliers so, exist like wholly in line so so, so yeah so the the so the so the question is how much of the assumption so yeah so one i would say you know i don't know 
um, because it's not necessarily is it comparable to the rest of the units or rest of the sort of um, well no I guess I would you're, say you're, you're asking me to do the if you're asking to do the graph presumably it's because it would change the out the, the results would change your mind in some way or you're not the guy gonna ask me to do work for nothing right. Oh, um, yeah, so so not yeah. work for nothing, but um, I, it is. I am sort of asking in the sense of like, what would a reasonable person suspect when reading mm -hmm. this as like a paper, and what mm -hmm. would I like yeah. to see, or what would I like to be informed about? So basically, what I would like to be informed about, because mm -hmm. my question is, and I don't think I have like this mm -hmm. hard decision rule of like, oh, if it's this, mm -hmm. if the variance hits this percent then it, mm -hmm. it's not good or something like that but i really mm -hmm. want to see one your first question that you answered was is it sort of comparable across other types of conflicts and then two i guess i don't know if you're going to like this or not but generally i would say mm -hmm. in this sort of research mm -hmm. are there sort of do researchers say that you know at a certain point oh, it's so yeah. unreliable or is this a very common practice so i want to look at the variance but then I want to look at sort of yeah, the, I can answer that the, too. how it relates to other studies. Yeah, I, I can answer that too. Um, so the, yeah. Yeah, the first question, yeah, the first question is very easy to answer. Um, no, it, this is not like any any sort of outlier in, in the field. This is not in any sort of outlier that, it, you know, it, when you look at two different belligerents giving estimations, obviously one belligerent has every incentive to give one number and another belligerent has an incentive to give another number. Um, they all they're bounded by like the degree to which they cannot look insane by giving a certain number to a certain number of people um you know but th so like you know hamas is in this case hamas is going to be incentivized to give a low number not to the point where they look completely insane but just insane enough the idf will be uh incentivized to give a higher number uh not to the point where they're completely insane but just where they look insane enough my view is the true number is going to be somewhere in between uh, and so if the question, if the first question is, you know, I, I, I certainly see no reason to believe one is one is having a bias in one direction any more than the other. So I, I see no reason to believe averaging is going to give the bias in any in any one given direction compared to the other direction. As much as like I could be that we could be doing an average one second. I'm, not, I'm talking first and I understand statistics. Um, yeah. I'm t I, I see no reason like if I didn't, if I didn't, you know, if I, I, I actually have the opposite suspicion. I, I have the suspicion that by averaging, I'm actually biasing it in favor of Hamas. Um, and then if I didn't, if I didn't average, if I did some other procedure, um, we get we get favors that probably would be even more. I'm trying to. I, I actually think it's a steel man to average that to even like include the terrorist figures. But anyway, um, so in terms of the first question, no, it's not like the ratio. The ratio between the two estimates is not an outlier at all. It's like wholly in line with like a whole bunch of different uh, battles. Uh, and then when it, when in terms of the other thing is like, is there a, is is this been done in uh, in the literature? Yes, averages have been done in the literature for these types of belligerent estimates, um, and the types of things where you get like consensus and this is another decision rule i have where if um there is like a historical consensus like that these are like real outliers like by real outliers i just mean like there's orders of magnitude of difference in the estimate and like, usually you see um a historical consensus where it's like okay well we don't take those seriously like if you look at the, the literature it's like okay like these these like every all the all the researchers that have been doing work on this would be like, okay, yes, they'll mention this estimate, but like they'll they'll say like these these are not considered taken seriously. Most of the estimates are like between this and this figure, and they'll give a figure that is more in line with uh, the rest, and that's what I go with. Um, so those are the two answers to your question. And then the most important thing is the sensitivity analysis, which is just to say like even in the magical case where the mass numbers are right, the inference is still even stronger than what I did it the first time. <laughs> Well, well, so yeah, so I want, I, so I want to go to that. I, so I want to go to the yeah. second part, but I want to, I want to stick to the first part yeah. just to sort of. Well, I want to address the first of... thing you said uh, because it's actually kind of important. Um, it is absolutely very common for there to be, uh, for there to be a wide disparity between the reported militants versus civilians killed by either side of a conflict. Obviously, um, however, what you will not do is you will not obscure. Uh, the fact that these are generated by motivated parties by filtering them through uh, in, in the form of averaging them out and then treating that as, let's say, a, a, a simple given that you can use to determine in absolute terms how many civilians were actually killed in a, in a given conflict. And that's what Avi's doing. That's why that's why this is a, a, a horrendously irresponsible project because its sole function 
is to go look relative to other conflicts we've uh, we've we've determined that a certain number of civilians have been killed versus militants and they see people are seeing the the outcome of this and it's looking like hey it's looking pretty good and it's leaving aside the fact i mean there's a couple of things going on first off it directly belie it directly contradicts um the uh, the idf's own uh, spoken decision outspoken decision to prioritize mass destruction over targeting and so the bare fact that uh, a large number of civilians are not being immediately killed in the short term is, is sort of irrelevant to the question of whether or not there is ethnic cleansing or genocide taking place in the region um, secondly uh, it gives the general impression um, that the figures that are generating this number of civilians has already been carefully verified and it simply hasn't and once again like when he talks about a sensitivity analysis um, I, I still haven't heard a, a description of, of anything that he's actually doing to offset like he, he, he said for example um, you can you if I misquote you you can correct me uh, he, he he said for example like let's uh, let's assume well I, I, I just I just don't know what on earth he is using to to clarify that these numbers are not being generated uh, by any means that's obscuring I, I haven't I haven't heard anything to that effect um, we, we have a clear motivation by the Hamas side. He accepts this. He even says, like, why, why would we... He implies that it's, it's odd that he would be involving the numbers given by the terrorists at all, which is a, a strange concession that ultimately he's, he's only accepting numbers from one side in the conflict, which is fair enough. Um, but uh, uh, following from that, we, we, have, we have clear ideological motivations and political motivations for the IDF to inflate the number of militants versus civilians killed. Um, and, and he, he says, well, they, they, they're, they're constrained by what makes them look insane, but we've, we've seen the photographs of what's happened to Gaza and we already have uh, a concession by Avi in our previous discussion, um, that they are all essentially going to be removed. Um, and the only question as to whether or not a genocide or ethnic cleansing has taken place is whether they're allowed back in mass in five years. I, I mean, this is, and that's, that's reference to the previous conversation. The previous I mean, conversation, I, yes. And, well, and you know, like, just on one at a time, if we can stick on one point at a time, paper. Uh, well, you would not, you would not compare these like be between conflicts right, in that, in that way. That is not yeah. common. Otherwise, of course, if that is common, yeah. your rep, your, and, and your project I'm, is redundant. Yeah. So, so I'm, so yeah, I'm. You're, you know, you could. This is not my Discord, obviously. So the rules apply, and so I don't mind people talking. I would, I would say Sunday, you you added in a lot of points, and you were getting you were getting pretty close to sort of like more toward the interpretation. And then not only the interpretation of his particular analysis, you were, you're talking about some of like the downstream stuff, and, you know, like it's like, that's fine. But, um, oh, I think, I think the bear, I think the bare fact that someone would engage in a project like this right now, specifically to offset the notion that it is, it is conceivable. That there's a genocide taking place as a city is being bombed, as it is being, uh, condemned across the world yeah, for it. No, as we and, are, and I, if I, I may very quickly just finish off that thought, yeah, sure. as as upwards of 20,000 people have been killed by his astonishingly low estimates, um, I, I think I think it, it demonstrates an extreme level of sophistry and, and moral corruption, bluntly, to be trying to carry water for a regime at the precise moment that it should be the most heavily scrutinized so that it is held to account for the unnecessary deaths it causes. He's done precisely the opposite. I think it's probably the most evil person a person pretending to be a philosopher can do. Is to try to use the appearance of reason in order to cover over political violence. I think it's disgusting. And and, and I, I, I understand that, that that's sort of like your their, your larger argument that you want to sort of have in the debate. And um, because it's, you know, it's not only the analysis, but it's sort of like, why is he doing this analysis and the intent of the analysis and the effect of the analysis? Um, you know, I, I, I understand like that's your point. I, I do kind of want to go back though, just so you can understand that we could have like a understanding. Oh, if I, if I, if I may, forgive me, forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to help you like do this really efficiently because there's only one piece of information that I want personally. Okay. okay. That would, that would satisfy me. Um, I, I want to know how on earth, uh, Avi has determined that the IDF reports are accurate what the criteria are as he understands them for identifying a militant versus a non-militant. I want him to tell me the same for the Hamas case. And I want him to explain why an average between these two in the context of judging this particular case is appropriate when one figure is double the other one. 
and I don't want reference to, well, it's very common for other conflicts to have similar disparities because you likewise wouldn't average those in that way. You wouldn't average two radically different propagandistically motivated figures to get to a, a sociologically relevant number, right? To get to a statistically relevant number in terms of judging the actual impact of the conflict because neither of these data points are reliable. To, to, to push back a little bit, um, if... You know, because if it's the case that this is routinely done and it's almost like a common methodology between these types of researchers, I mean, you can maybe add in, well, the researchers are politically motivated. Well, averaging, I mean, that averaging, out, averaging out figures is common to every single field. The question is what you do with the average. Right. And you would not use the average from, from figures like this in order to determine, present it in a manner that, that suggests that this is more objective than the two data points that fit into it. How many civilians versus militants were killed in a given conflict? Yeah, and, and the only thing I would say is that gets back to the original point where like suppose I think, suppose you know, we did the same thing with October seventh, right? I don't think Avi would accept those figures at all. If if uh, Hamas's estimates as to the number of militants versus civilians killed widely widely in the opposite direction, you see people like Bad and Panada saying, "Oh, all those people who were like the vast majority were military men. It was near military base." Da, 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 versus uh, versus the other estimates that say, "No, most of them were civilians at a party." Like I I I think we would both agree that would be a disgusting thing to do. I am perplexed as to why he's doing the exact same thing in the opposite direction. Just to be clear, if 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 Hamas did give a figure that. Um, Come on, we gotta let paper talk. Pa paper's oh, been trying to talk for like yeah, five shut up, minutes. Abby. Let's let. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah I'm. Yeah, 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 yeah I guess through, through, I guess was being soft, Mr. Betterman. No, you, you, yeah, I think he's just being funny. But but to, but to your point, Avi, like um, you you did when you did the because you did this analysis for October seventh because that's yeah. one of the events. Mm -hmm. And so, did you average Hamas's and the IDF's numbers for those? No, Two? because there is no there is no estimate for the Hamas. But if there was one that was off by by this same amount, I would have averaged it, and it wouldn't have and it would have changed it by three point three to six point something, which I would have yeah. been fine. With. And 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 so here's here's what I would say is sort of the final claim because I think Sunday is he's really wanting some sort of precedent for that averaging. And so one, I think it's going to be hard to just say like, well, it's not that big because here's this data analysis. I want to see the, that data analysis, but I think what's going to help me and I think what's going to help Sunday is that there, there, you know, there are a lot of models out there on conflict that have been taking, you know, these numbers of civilian deaths and military deaths, and they've been trying to find out what are the best numbers, and they know that there's going, like, there's going to be politically motivated calculation of numbers, and I think, Avi, if you sort of take that literature and you sort of build it into your larger, you know, into your larger paper and say, I use this assumption. I think this is a reasonable assumption, even though we had everything, you know, Sunday said, everything that you said, everything that I said. Um, this is the background literature supports this as as least as a plausible idea for the initial model. That is plausible to do these averages when you have these two particular estimates that you know are going to be gamed in some sort of way. And that there's going to be averages. Now, I think, barring that, barring that, and then you could, I, I think, still Sunday can still make the point that well, the averages are going to be too motivated for one way or the other way, and particularly how one defines um, a militant combatant, because that that's important as well. Because you know, there's there's been like political. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but generally there's been um, there's been discussions where sometimes just people of a certain age, like men of a certain age, are considered like a combatant, and that is like a very big. Um, well, that, was, that's a big that was never that was never true for Israel. What they did was they made a separate classification of unclassified. They never actually did that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Uh, so I'm. I'm. You know. I. I don't know that, but like that's what you told me, and so I. I'll believe it until I hear otherwise. But like, there's been discussions of that, and so Sunday can make the point, and and this is a hypothetical because, like, I'm. I'm just saying it's hypothetical. He says, well, if the IDF says, you know, eighteen to twenty four, you're automatically a combatant. Then, I want to. It might be the case that. Yeah. The IDF is consistently over, and not only do I want to know maybe the the 
you know, the civilian death rates, but I want to know by age because I want to say, well, actually, all of these 18 to 24 year olds, I don't want to say 100 percent of them were combatants. I might want to say 20 percent are combatants or something, or I have some reason to believe it's 20 percent for some yeah. other reason. No, and, and so, it gets, it, it, yeah, it gets it yeah. just gets the scholarship of it, of why maybe the average is not the best. So and by the way, when I'm doing the when I'm doing this project, that's I'm not just averaging and not looking into like the estimates and like where they're coming from and like if I should weigh them differently. Like that's I am doing that. I just don't see any reason to weigh the IDF less than the Hamas estimate. That's all. Right. So and so then that's you know and, and so I think it's sort of the strength of the have... ultimately the, the the thing we're going to go on next, which is the. The, the sensitivity analysis, but yeah, yeah, that, that's where I'm going. Yeah, so, so, so basically, that that's the inference for the first model, right? So that's the thing that we said. This is the reasonable assumption because you know to make a model, you have to make assumptions. Generally, these assumptions are wrong, and you have to kind of gauge what are the downsides, what are you know what are, I mean, not the downsides, what are the what will happen at an inferential level when we sort of make these assumptions? Are we robust robust to these assumptions? Are these assumptions super unreasonable? unreasonable? Are they reasonable? Are they testable? Things like that. And so generally what happens is when someone makes a case that there's something wrong with your model, there's no there's known as something as a sensitivity analysis. And so Avi, I think you I think you can maybe do a little better job in your reporting by saying you did a sensitivity analysis because it's that's such a broad term. You might want to say specifically what you did because I think because I think even a lot of this communication breakdown with Sundays like I don't know what you mean when you say sensitivity analysis. But then you know, I, you guys you know, obviously it's super heated and you don't like each other and blah blah blah. Yeah, so it's if, if I, paper, but, would you indulge me for a moment? Um. Okay, it's a point of clarification it's, it's, for your it, previous yeah. question of him, and I'm curious. So we don't have Hamas data on the number of uh, civilian versus militant deaths, right? What if the for, what if for the, October seventh for October seventh? Yes. What if the question didn't concern uh, relative risk militants versus uh, civilians? What if uh, the question concerned statistically how many rapes occurred in a given conflict? The number Hamas gives is zero. Would you would you apply that same methodology here to generate your number? Can I just say is is that the same topic though, or are we are we? Oh, it, abs it, abs it absolutely is because it's it's the it's the principle by which you derive a, a figure um, to make I a statement about a conflict. Wanted right? to talk about he wanted to get into he wanted to get into sensitivity analysis, but I want to hear an answer to right. that question quickly. I want to know if in the case that we weren't calculating militant versus civilian deaths, because we're in this case we're talking about calculating militant deaths, right? Suppose we were talking about calculating rapes. Would you average let's, out let's, zero let's and however many number that the IDF reported? I actually don't know off the top of my head. Let, let's let paper choose to either humor that or move on, because I don't want paper to get. Fo I want paper to set the direction a bit i i feel like i feel like a simple yes or no would suffice and we can move on easily without an interruption so or it, it it's a simple it's, yes or no obvi you can you can move us along oh the, the question is to me not to paper oh yeah the question is um, to you no i wouldn't i wouldn't accept oh, okay. if, wait it's a question to me no i wouldn't accept the so idea for hamas estimate because neither of them are doing estimates on rapes um well the the, uh, are, that's not true though hamas says zero so let's assume let's no, assume well, israel did any number right. whatsoever Wait, excuse me, one second. Well, if you listen, it's a point of process. If you're going to ask me a question, let me complete the answer. Yeah, but you're full of yeah, shit, so, and everything you do is so, to obfuscate. Okay, well then, then why are you asking me a question, dude? Like, look, so the people, so just to, to let you lay like, bare the poverty of your character. Okay, then why? Then okay, then then if you're not interested in hearing my answer, why am I? Why am I'm why very am I interested in hearing your answer. I just don't need yeah, you to. Feel, so I just don't need you to feel yeah, cozy. So like, it. Yeah. So in one case, in one case, I have we, we have one side that's not the IDF. That's doing an investigation. We have several individuals doing it, doing uh, doing investigations. One, there was a New York Times investigation. We have uh, we, but in the in the hypothetical you're presenting, if the, the one side that's doing the investigation is not the IDF, it, there are certain ministries in Israel that are doing it, and they're doing it with they're they're doing it with an estimate, not just coming up with a figure, not just making a claim. They're actually they're actually giving having a certain methodology. They have they have pictures, they have testimony, they have witnesses, they're interviewing. 
Um, now, if Hamas did that same analysis, like if they actually did, OK, well, we interviewed the people you interviewed and we did our assessment or we had some sort of a methodology that we we're making available and, and it was zero and it was and it was the, or, a, a 200 fold difference. And if my project was doing relative risk rape estimates for whatever fucking reason I would do that, sure, I would do that. But I would also do a sensitivity analysis being like, OK, well, let's say what happens when Hamas is when Hamas is just full of shit. And let's use the if let's go with the IDF estimates only. Let's see what the inference is there. So I would present all of the models then. Uh, and just like I'm I'm doing, I, I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to present my sensitivity analysis but Israel's, as well. But Israel's, Israel's clear motive and eagerness to generate it's, those high numbers is noted and it's been criticized across the board. Is, I, we already talked about the motivations. Okay, I've answered the question, Paper. Do you want to go into this? <laughs> I've already answered the yeah, question. And, and po point of process also going forward, just for kind of all parties, Shmuck. let's let's like not in with questions unless they're necessary to understand the thing on the table because we don't want to do the crazy multi-thread thing like what if there's other topics to raise let's just hit them after then we can just kind of go one by one and sort of stay on no we're going it's going back so, linearly to a previous question that was asked and I, I i got i got i got my answer like he he will refuse to answer that question because it's i it, answered it lays it, it lays well, part of the problem no i absolutely answered okay. it what well, okay i'm just making a suggestion let's let paper talk mm. paper what you what you saying yeah so uh, i oh d do you want me to answer the question no, no you were trying to say something before all this you were talking you were trying to i think talk about sensitivity, sensitivity analysis. oh yeah yeah sensitivity analysis okay okay just sensitivity pick up analysis. where you left off just pretend nothing was talked about for the last like two minutes <laughs> okay um sensitivity analysis okay so often when you do a model someone will say hey you didn't do this or hey what if this was the result or this assumption was meant or this model was used instead of that and then so what you do when someone asks for that you do a sensitivity analysis and it's essentially saying you run the model where you change the assumption or you change uh the particular point that's of of concern and then you run that analysis again to get sort of the output and so now you what you find is you have this analysis, you had assumption A, and then now you have assumption A no more, and you have assumption B, and you have two different models, two different outputs, and then you basically look for a qualitative difference between these two numbers. And generally how it works is when there's not, they're kind of close together, there's not something that you know is statistically significantly different or whatnot, or depending on how you want to define significance, um, you would say, hey, it's robust to that assumption. Meaning, regardless of A or B, the inference still stands. And so, like, as an example, um, uh, so I use, like, I use biomedical examples. I use, like, smoking causes cancer. That's, like, the easiest one. Um, so one could say I did my analysis, but instead of asking um, how many packs a day they smoked, uh, you know, I asked the respondents how many packs a day. I recorded how many packs a day. They were like, well, you should probably ask them how many cigarettes they smoke because there might be differences in packs. I mean, generally packs are, you know, kind of standardized, but there could be some differences in that you should ask them how many cigarettes they actually smoke. And so I, and let's say I did ask that, but I just ran the analysis in packs or whatever, because so I have to assume that I have the questions. I, I didn't, I didn't think about this. I didn't follow through with this question, but, but, but so yeah, so basically you run the analysis and you find the association of smoking and cancer is like a relative risk of like eight or something like that. And then you run it again with this sort of new measurement of smoking, and it's like 7.7 .7 or something like that. And so they're both statistically significant. And you would say, you know what? There's not a big difference between 8 and 7.7. .7. They are different. You know, they're two different numbers. You're always going to get like two slightly different numbers. Um, but it's, it's robust to that assumption of whether I use packs or number of cigarettes smoked and so in that sense you would say you ran a sensitivity analysis and you found that the inference was robust to that assumption 
And so that generally what happens, this generally happens when you get like a review back and they say, oh, well, what about this? Why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? And you're like, okay, well, we did it this way and the results didn't change. No, I understand, I understand, so I, understand I understand the concept. So again, my, my question, yeah. my question remains, um, given the, the high discrepancy between the Hamas and the IDF numbers, how, how on earth have you, have you, uh, how on earth have you controlled for all of the variables that would, that, that do lead them to, uh, widely overestimate the number of, of people they're hitting are, 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 are militants. Like there's, there's, I, I don't see how on earth you could conceivably do that. So, so then, so I, and then the question would be, um, so here is sort of, the, like we, 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 li we literally just have, we have official reports by the IDF and we have claims by Hamas and I, I don't, I, I don't see any, any additional data that he could be using to, to, to pair that away primarily because most of the uh like every party that is reporting any death ha has a vested interest in a particular outcome at, at every single level um in in the case of the people who are themselves like in, engaging in the smart bombing of of like the the uh like sort of historically of the households of suspected hamas operatives or who are who are uh claiming that oh we've this is a this is a hamas occupied building we're tapping it and bombing it it's like okay <laughs> So who's who's sifting through the rubble and, and confirming this? You see how this? Do you understand how the sensitivity analysis I I outlined uh, addresses that, in it, it being robust to the uh, to that to the concern of different uh, estimates uh, being discrepant yeah. apart? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so so then basically Sunday his sort of his way of doing the sensitivity analysis is we're assuming that. So we did the average, or, you know, he did the average. Yeah. When we do this analysis, we do the average. And that this average is wrong because uh, it's either, it's not close enough to the IDF, IDF estimate, or it's not close enough to the Hamas estimate. And we know the Hamas estimate is trying to be lower than normal. And we're trying to see if the IDF and the IDF estimate is trying to be high as normal. So then what he would do is say, how robust is this assumption of averaging by running the analysis? Well, we, are, we actually don't know that, to be clear. Like we, we don't, we don't know that Hamas is trying to be higher than normal. And we don't know that is lower than normal. Lower, lower, lower than normal. We lower lower than normal. Thinking. And we don't, we don't know. Normal, we don't know yeah, that Hamas is trying to be lower than normal, and we don't know that the IDF is trying to be higher than normal. The only thing we know so, is that so there then, is an interest so then, in one to be low and in one to be high. But one could be yeah, the assumption fortuitously, is going to be yeah. fortuitously situated to have a high number, anyways, or yeah, the, 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 vice versa. Yeah. Wait, okay. So so that you know that is that is a that is a decent point in the sense of like we we cannot infer why if if the idf is higher than it's the real number and if hamas is lower than the real well, number the, the point the point i'm getting at is that we need a particular reason to think that the true number would tend towards some middle ground between these two figures and i don't see any anything to suggest that that's the case that that's something that avi needs to provide. Uh, well, i think there's i think everyone would agree that that's the, i can give reasons why that would be the case but i think just about everyone well, well, between in between six thousand and twelve thousand yeah. is a very wide berth, Avi. That's the problem. No, it's wide. We agree. Yeah, so it's 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 a wide it's a wide number, and then Avi, like Avi, and this is going back to point number one that if since you're doing the averaging, you're going to try to make the case that that's reasonable. You know, that mm -hmm. was the whole the, the yep. other estimates. You know, the idea that you know even though. Um, Hamas and the IDF have different motivations. They tend to be within the ballpark for previous conflict. You know, whatever argument that you're going to make, you're going to make that argument, and then Sunday's going to agree with it or not, right? But then the, the question of the sensitivity analysis is whatever number that you come up with, if you think that number is wrong, then the sensitivity analysis is there to say, well, how far away would that number have to be for it to for the inference to sort of change. And so for it to be completely like uh, it's completely wrong or it's it's null or it's even in the reverse direction, right? That like smoking is protective or whatnot. You would have to say how big of that discrepancy is the true number from the estimated number. And so in absence of a real robust like, oh, well, 
obviously the number is 7,532. Like there's no, there's no third or fourth group kind of saying we know what the correct number is. Avi is basically saying, okay, well, there's this dispute between two parties. Yeah, but this, this once again, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm following the paper, but this once again speaks to the irresponsibility of the project as a whole. Okay, because now there's there's two different levels here. So there's the, the, the data is being generated in a very sloppy way, when you use that language, in the case of the individual conflict. And then more broadly, uh, this figure from an ongoing conflict is being juxtaposed against cases as, 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 as radically diverse as Hiroshima. So the problem is that what he's ultimately doing is he's framing his graph in such a way as one gets the impression that the amount of civilians being killed versus the amount of militants is radically lower than the critics of the conflict are claiming. And then at a broader scale, he's comparing this to in, in insanely, uh, often insanely um, incomparable instances in order to make it appear as though this is a relatively careful and humane process that is taking place, um, that he's representing by its its relative risk compared to these other conflicts. So that's that's the problem here. The project as a whole is, is a transparent act of, of pro-genocide propaganda. Like it's, it's fundamentally it. Or genocide denial, if you prefer. This is this isn't like hard hard to hard to see. Like Nazis do this all the time with the Holocaust. How many cookies can an oven bake, and so on and so forth? Okay, um, we're careening off into a whole bunch of issues now. Let's, let's talk about sensitivity now. Like, like, talk about this. Like, well, everything you say is a waste of time. Just say how you dis, just say how just say how you controlled for uh, Israel's interest in generating those numbers. Just say how you did it. So, so do the fact that you even it should take five seconds just to say, look, this is this is what I looked what at. The this analysis is how... is how it's done. You haven't been listening to this to paper even even. No, I understand the concept, but you still have not given an explanation That's at all of what you actually you did. did. Okay, let paper try to explain. No, it. I let want you to explain it, Avi. Stop I mean, being a coward. Explain yourself. You're, you're making this graph presumably to explain something. If you're unwilling, unwilling to explain it to an interested onlooker, I have no interest in explaining if I know. I know you don't, because if you explain things, then unfortunately, it becomes very apparent what you're doing. Yeah, I'll explain it to paper. So paper. So one thing I can I've done. Are you listening, paper? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So one thing I've done is I can say, okay, well, I can run the numbers, not just run the numbers um, with the Hamas estimate, with the assumption that the Hamas estimate is going to be some value lower than the true value. So that's one thing. So in that in that case, you get a value of. Uh, the relative risk is 19.1, which is even higher than when I initially did the Bayesian inference, which it was 16 point something. I can also do it by saying, okay, what if Hamas just fortuitously is uh, higher than the actual number? I could say, okay, well, let's say it's less than 1,000. Then you get 15.3. Then if it was 5,000 killed, let's say it's even less than that. Let's say it was 4,000. Then you get then you get 11. So even if Hamas is even if Hamas themselves are fortuitously off. And they are overestimating the number of militants killed. Something that virtually no one, other than some of the most bad, you're talking about almost a thousand difference dead, yes. sir. Mm -hmm. So yes, obviously, I, so I, obviously, I, obviously, I, if it doesn't make a difference in the relativist talking, project itself, you, then the relative risk project itself you, is propagandistic and misleading in nature and intent. Sorry, obviously, sorry, because sorry, you would have to be so sorry, goddamn stupid sorry, to do that otherwise. Sorry, yeah, I yeah, yeah, let's con let's. I don't calm care. Down. I don't like, care, Isaac. Let's. Well, okay. Well, either way, let's let's just see. So, paper, what's your assessment of the? What do you think the core disagreement is here? What what have you taken it to be? Okay. Yeah. Um. So so I I think I think the big problem is that Sunday is more of like a holistic kind of person where he kind of he sees it as like he he's seeing it and if i if i get this wrong sunday let me know but basically i think you see it as there's so many issues with each part of the analysis so with each like at each level of the analysis there's so much uncertainty that's coming in to the point that it probably hit like a threshold with you that the uncertain that there's so much uncertainty to it 
that it's not worth doing. No, not at all. And that the matter is not uncertainty. Okay. I think I think uh, comparing the reported militant to civilian death tolls is a perfectly valid project to do. Where I take issue with this is that he is averaging these numbers out in order to generate at one level of his study the appearance that high estimates of the civilian deaths are untrustworthy. And then by, and then he's using uh, the other level, the macro level of the analysis where he's comparing it with other conflicts to give the general impression that what's happening in Gaza is relatively benign. And so it's propagandistically laden at two levels. And when pressed to justify uh, d doing any of these things, he, he basically has no answer. When pressed to ask, why, why are you averaging out two numbers to, in order to generate with confidence um, the number that you are using uh, to generate the total number of civilians killed. Uh, he, he basically has no answer. He refuses to elaborate on, on how on earth he's actually controlling for this. But his answer is effectively uh, amounts to, well, it doesn't really change the outcome anyways, which a thousand difference is you know, a pretty incredible thing to say. You're talking about close to a third of, of the total number reduced. But leaving that aside, um, in terms of like at the macro level then, okay, let's, let's, let's run with that. Okay, it doesn't really change the outcome. Um, why are you comparing it in the way that you are to the types of conflicts that you are? Clearly, this is not, it is not fruitful to compare what's happening in Gaza, especially as it is ongoing to Hiroshima. Um, the only reason why you would do this is to give an impression of, well, this is, this is relatively very, very small. And the kind of people who are going to be reading this, uh, are going to be looking at, Ooh, look, small lion, Gaza. Okay. That's, that's the issue. Um, and every single part of this could be done responsibly. And, and I, I would be surprised if it hasn't been done responsibly by other people already. Um, what he is doing and what he's been doing for, for a while now, um, has been to find a way that he intuitively thinks will help his case in cheerleading on Israel as it ethnically cleanses Gaza. That's it. Okay. So paper, do you want to explain how sensitivity analysis worked to him? Jesus Christ. <laughs> So I, to be to be honest, or, or to be honest, I think I think that um, he had he had some trepidation at sort of this first level, but because because I think like you know, and we both agreed you know you should you should say why you did the averaging and you should look at the reasonableness. But Sunday, his point is saying that he picked he picked something standard. That he picked this averaging, he thinks this averaging is reasonable, and be, from his other research that he did, and then, but of course, he knows that that's going to be a test. You know, that's going to be an assumption that people might have issue with, and so he ran a sensitivity analysis, and then so he ran a sensitivity analysis, and he found that his sort of his general hypothesis of what he's trying to do is robust to those particular those differences between Hamas and IDF numbers. And I I, I think I, I don't say you, you'd have to agree with him on that at that point, but I think you'd have to say either make an argument there or just say, you know, that's those are the current assumptions and if there's something if something comes to light, like if someone like if like some group comes in and they do all this research and they're actually very well known and they're like, well, averaging is actually really bad. You need to pick this third obscure number, right? Then you could say, Avi, you need to do that. And then, you know, he'd probably like do it. But I think what you wanted, what you want to do is I think you want to move to the next part of the argument about sort of the inferences that are being made, like what is the actual analysis saying as the result? And then what is this sort of outcome of, um, like, why is he saying it and the purpose of what he's saying it? Because the, the point where yeah. you're basically yeah. saying the, Hiro the Hiroshima <laughs> comparison and it being benign and that he's, you know, standing up for genocide and stuff like that. I think it's like you want to get to that part of the argument. And then, but yeah, I would say you'd probably want to, like, well, stop. Well, I don't. I, I well. I think it's very clear he doesn't understand what the purpose of the pro for the project is and what I've been clear about it is. But but, the, but my main point here is just he needs to understand that the inference is going to be. There's ways of showing that the inference is going to be robust to the concerns he's bringing. Like the the inference in terms of like the probability expecting probability of observing genocide on uh, a relative risk above a given value on the of genocide and how it updates your priors. That inference is going to be quite robust to this type of concern, but based on the sensitivity analysis. 
and yeah, even and I think he, yeah, uh, and, and I think he's making a point which I, I, I don't. He, he either has to flesh it out or just move on to the next point, where the idea that because he, he kind of said this Sunday, you, you basically thought the idea that well, if it's robust to these two assumptions, that seems like they're so different that there has to be something wrong with the model that it it is robust to it something along those lines and then it's like to me that i i don't see where that kind of argument is going and i i, I think and and then when you start talking you start talking about like the downstream part of the argument that you're trying to debate him on well no Does because well well no because the point is not the relative risk comparison i, I think that's that's pretty transparently obvious the point is to be able to transfer yourself from one assessment to one in which you can say this conflict is relatively not bad. And in the course of the first one, to cast aspersions on lower estimates of the militants versus civilian uh, death rates. Th that's it. So the reason why the average matters in this particular case is because he's using that to subtract the total number of civilians killed versus militants by roughly a thousand. That's, that's crazy. On the basis of an average between a, 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 a motivated um, and, and historically very opaque organization, uh, we can say that on both ends, um, that is double the, the number of the other one. He's still not understanding the sensitivity. Well, let, let me ask something here of, of paper, actually. So mm -hmm. tell me if I'm wrong, but this, this is what I interpreted your last statement as being paper. You think that Avi's analysis, at least given what we have so far, maybe something else will come to light, is robust to concern that Sunday's raising, but you think that he has a range of other concerns and those might be legitimate and worth hearing, but that we should all agree that it's robust to this concern before moving on. Am I understanding you correctly or not? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's my basic assessment, that I, I think Sunday that the... Because basically he's saying... Well, if you think the averaging is wrong and you think the IDF numbers are so wrong, well, I'll just rerun the analysis with just the Hamas numbers and then we'll see what what the new model says and we'll see if the inference holds, right? So this is the, you know, the smoking example of whether it's a relative risk of 8 or 7.7. And so okay. I, yeah. Yeah, so before we move to mm -hmm. like further concerns Sunday might have you, do you disagree with that, Sunday, that if it's the case that the numbers are robust to average concerns because the same result can be found using the Hamas favorable numbers, that then that's not that concern's kind of like dealt with? Well, we the same the same, same number is clearly not found with the Hamas favorable it's numbers. The numbers it's a difference of 2,000, right? It's not the okay. same number, okay. Okay. but, same, but the, the conclusion is robust to the to those numbers. Yeah. So what he's saying so, is that what he's saying is that oh, the okay. what he's saying is that the relative risk you get from it is is in range. But that's that's sort of sure, irrelevant sure, sure. here. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. But I okay. But that just may, I'm not a stats guy. It might have been my misphrasing. I've done two stats courses, and paper like helped me pass them. So, just to, but to be clear, I I did phrase it with an if though, right? So, if it turns out that we get the same conclusion. Even if we run with the Hamas favorable numbers rather than the averages, then surely we can all just agree that that, that the Avi's work is robust with respect to the concern around the averages and then move to whatever the next criticism is. Yeah, but it's only robust with concern to the averages if it generates the same, if it generates the same, um, uh, 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 number relative risk. Relative risk. Relative. Thank you. I lost the word. Yeah, so it's not. That's that's. Well, that's another point of contention. Then it's not. You can have a conclusion that's robust, even if the, even if you, with a different relative risk. So I, Isaac, I think you'll understand it like this. Like, let's say we have two different relative risks. Like one is, um, fifteen and one is thirty, and like you mm -hmm. run the analysis and it gives you like in one case it gives you like the probability of genocide being committing is like zero point zero zero one, and the other analysis gives you zero point zero zero two. Now, that's like a two hundred percent difference, right, Isaac? Like zero point zero. I, I, I get, yeah. I get the point. You're, you're yeah. saying it's a threshold thing. So sure, maybe we yep. rerun yep. the numbers in a way that's favorable to the other side, and we don't get the same result, but we get a result that's still in the same kind of range beyond yeah. the threshold where we'd say that we're getting a result of a particular sort, right? Like if the if we're getting 
the difference is 0 0.001 and 0 0.002 or something, we can say both are in the range of like extremely unlikely, even if it's not the same result. I, that's the point, right? And I doubt yep. Sunday disagrees with that. If that, yeah, Sunday, you agree with that. No, right? I understand that concept. It's just the transition from the one to the the, the macro analysis to the the comparison of things like Hiroshima. Um, okay, but yeah, but that's that's wait wait. But I so I agree with paper here though, which is though I want to hear those concerns out. But that's a separate concern. No, I understand. But the reason why and I'm talking the, about them in, both in conjunction with each other so um, tenaciously is because it's a classic Moton Bailey. He he jumps back to um, well, it's irrelevant with respect to the macro comparison. When he's talking about the when he's talking about the 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 micro the micro analysis of the um of the individual conflict, um, but they both serve like an identical but but different propagandistic purpose, namely the one is to compare okay. it to other conflicts, is make it appear benign, and then the first one is to uh, give a low evaluation of uh, of high estimates of militants versus or uh, civilians versus militants killed. Okay, but that that sounds like it falls under what paper was calling kind of the downstream effects, or may, maybe that's not the right way to characterize it. But but either way, I w I want to hear those points out. It's just, you know, in it seems it seems right to well, me. Well, when he says the sensitivity analysis yielded that the outcome was fine, like that that outcome is going to be fine relative to other conflicts, right? That's that's how he's doing that. Oh, no. what's what's your what's your I, point I, of comparison? Otherwise, well, like in, no, in, in what me, range? Let me see if I let me see if I un understand. Right. So it sounds it sounds like wait, I, it just it sounded like we all agree on this. It sounds like we agree with the particular. No, it doesn't. It, it, it sounds like it sounds like Avi is is hiding behind the opacity of his language and his unwillingness to give any legible accounting of his methodology. Um. Okay, but but just with the average, uh, let me make sure I get I get your point though. Like with the averages, the concern is if we're if we're averaging the numbers by Hamas and the IDF, and IDF has like systematic problems that lead them to have numbers that are off to a greater degree. Yes. Then even if we take the average, we could be getting something that's biased in favor of the IDF, right? That's that yes. was the that particular. Of course, yes. you have a ton of other concerns too, which I'm interested in hearing. But okay, so that particular concern. If it turns out that we get a result that's also over the threshold of low probability, if we run with the Hamas numbers, we low can probability say in terms of genocide, right? I think yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. just re yeah. So that that's what I'm talking about with the Moton Bailey. Like that that part is irrelevant to this this point because the only reason why it's being brought up at this juncture is to say, well, it's it's okay if I if I draw this average because at the macro scale, it doesn't really affect its placement, but that's immaterial. Because the function of the micro analysis of Iron Swords is is not to situate it next to these other ones, because as he pointed out, it doesn't affect it either way. In fact, why why bother even averaging them? Why not just have uh, an account for each? Um, what what it does <laughs> is uh, it allows him to say it's like, look, I'm completely justified in in giving the general impression that high estimates of civilian deaths are discreditable. Uh, because it doesn't affect the actual purpose of my study, which is the comparison with other conflicts. But these these are I both just... these are both separate, right? Like he's he's like th these two different things can do the same thing at different levels. I'm just I'm stuck on this point, Sunday. Like what I'm stuck on is if we say that a probability below a certain threshold is not indicative of genocide. And then there's a. Well, yeah, I, 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 I deny, I deny that out, out of hand. That's a stupid thing to say. Like, for example, how on earth would you determine that a genocide is not taking place due to militant civilian risk? If, for instance, okay, a wait, genocide is I, taking okay. place and all the no, parties of one side are, are, are either actual or, or presumed militants. I hear you. Okay, so yeah, so you think that even if it's the case that the number comes out low, that's it's not actually gonna. We're not clearly reaching a conclusion. Okay. I, I get what you're saying. Let me let me just ask this though. Sure. When you give the when you raise that concern around averages, if the average were to come out high, you think okay, just let me let me think of how best to phrase this. You you agree about? I'll, t I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why the uh, the average interested me. Um, it interested me because it was emblematic. Of a of a very low level of concern with respect to whether or not there is uh, any potential for the data being compared yielding a misleading result. 
that's that's the issue um if okay. if if for example like it's distinctly possible oh, okay. that it's dis distinctly possible for example that the wsj kept up and was closer to idf numbers and perhaps is even possibly wrong it's it's possible he includes like it's possible there there's a there's an alternate universe in which this exact same situation is happening but we have like seven different data points and they all skew okay. in favor of the idf or they all or the majority of them skew in favor of hamas or whatever I know how to phrase it so it, I because I understand the, that the problem with how I phrased it was it's it's grant if it's like okay if it's robust to this thing and we're we end up granting way too much to Avi if, if we're saying that there then we don't have some basis for thinking it's a genocide because there might be other reasons like the ones you're mentioning okay I understand that concern let me just say it like this okay to whatever degree we're th we think that something might be a genocide in virtue of the fact that the numbers could be off because of that kind of concern around Israel having a systemic bias, leading them to have numbers that are off to a greater degree. To whatever degree, that is the reason why we think that the genocide claim is inaccurate. That reason is undermined if Avi shows his analysis is robust with respect to the averaging. That we can agree with, right? No, sure, but then my you issue would be with his definition of genocide, which I think would be silly. Okay, yes, yes, yes. No, but this is this is good though, because because mm -hmm. yeah, because you have you have other points and other things to make. But that Avi and Paper should also both be satisfied with that, right? We understand we can we can all agree, to whatever degree, that the the claim that um th that it might still be a genocide is in virtue of the averaging concern, that has been undercut. Now we we know that that's not the case because the averaging concern the the analysis is robust with respect to that there may still be a reason to think it's a genocide that's not it though we all we all agree with that that's all three people agree well i definitely agree with that i'm i've, I've done the sensitivity analysis it's robust to it well yeah that's um, the point I, is making too right yeah i i agree but i i do want to add an extra point and i know it's going to make things a little tangenty but i want to i kind of want to pick up on what sunday said is um I, I think there is a concern that I think he's sort of begut, begrudgingly agreeing at this point and wants to move on to the next point. But I think he's also making a other point that the averaging to him when he, when Avi did the averaging, that sounded like it wasn't a sound methodology. And I think he's trying to make the inductive argument that or he's trying he's trying to make the argument that um that speaks I'm to a bias. Piece, a piece of yeah, shit. A bias, a bias, yeah. I'm a piece yeah, you would, you I'm would, a level of concern for like all the terrible things that are happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. You wouldn't, yeah, you yeah, wouldn't yeah. do that in the first place if you were a, a sane, like even minded person with normal human concerns. That's the kind of thing a crazy evil genocidal Yeah, okay. I get I get yeah. that idea. Okay, so th this is good though. So we, we have agreement on that one point. To whatever degree the we're our belief that it's a genocide is in virtue of the fact that we think that the numbers are uh, the, not robust to an averaging concern that's been undercut but there might be a plethora of other reasons so yeah let's like discuss those sunday was about to launch into some of them so yeah, I mean, this be, my, it, yeah. my project doesn't classify genocides uh, based on my definition of genocide um <laughs> that was the whole, one of the whole points of the of, of, of doing that it was it was just to evaluate really? If there is, yeah, really. So whose uh, who's definition of genocide um, insists well, that a genocide yeah, so is based I, upon a low militant versus civilian death rate? Yeah. Well, that's not, well, okay, that's, well, that's a whole different level of confusion. Uh, so what I just said, I'll repeat myself. What I just said was, when I classify an event based on a genocide or a contested genocide, it's not based on me saying, oh, I think this was the genocide because I have my own definition of genocide and this met the definition or it's not clear if this well, met It doesn't the matter whose definition you're using. Yeah. Well, I was using... Oh, I think... Well, I do think it does because... Well, I, I, don't, I, don't really care, I don't really care which name is well, slapped on your definition does. of genocide. Well, the reason is the motive for it, selecting that particular one in the it, first place. It, and it's, it's obvious you're moving centripetally from right. you have a comparison with other conflicts. You want to treat this one as relatively benign. And so you move from right. there into anything you can use to justify that. Right. And your point of <laughs> reference is, well, if I average out between the amount of militants reported by Hamas, the amount of militants reported by... The idea. I don't know why I tried explaining the methodology. He's not interested, but okay, if you have a criticism, go for it. <laughs> like, I don't know. What, what part of this is confusing you? Like, what's what's oh. your definition of genocide? Surely it doesn't involve, for example, the total removal of an ethnic group from a location, right? 
It's the well. What I use is the one is the international is the same definition that the ICJ would use. Uh, it's the same definition that you could find in the UN. Oh, so you mean you mean by the international body, for example, yeah. that gave rise to one of the states involved, not one of the other ones, whose main security uh, council members are all complicit in sometimes ongoing genocides. Actually, I'm curious. Do you consider what's happening to the Uyghurs in China to be a genocide? Um. Do I consider it to be a genocide? I don't. That's what I. That's what I, that's I, what I thought. Yeah, the answer is I don't. I Mr. don't know. Mr. I have to, Mr. Big, I big to global very, analysis over here. Yeah. Well, I'm just answering a question. It's one of the only. It's one of the only talked about genocides in the media. Oh, you don't have a oh, point of reference oh, for that one. Like, oh, I, Jesus. So my, well, no, because it's not a. Well, no, I, I, I don't. I haven't read up enough about the 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 Uyghurs to know if it's. Um, a genocide or not by international law standards um i'm happy to, to look into that if you'd like me to but, um in terms of nor am i aware of the, if there was a if there was a case on it or if i think it would but it, it's well, for, very for example the reason why i bring up the uyghurs in particular is because cultural genocide is not encompassed for example by the un definition and the reason for that is okay, not because I, is not because I'm the original sure. formulator of the concept of genocide right. didn't include that. In fact, he did. The reason for that. The reason for that. I'm we're almost done. The reason. The reason for that is because all the parties involved had active cultural genocides ongoing at the time. Is he gonna just? Is the he gonna UN just definition not... of genocide is negotiated between historically genocidal powers, currently genocidal is, powers. Is actually, just gonna, is he just gonna steamroll over when he asks a question? Like, yes. is, is that like is uh, when I when I'm calling for a mod for, to not do that? Because if that's the mod. case, I don't really. Mod. I don't really see a point in continuing, but I don't want the, to talk to you, Avi. You disgust in me. Terms, in terms of well, that makes two of us. Uh, I, you disgust me as well. But the point is that I, if I thought that if we had a a, a moderator here who, no, I don't. who would, you're just Eric okay. Cartman whining for mommy. So, oh, okay, so look, I mean, we it's I I think we actually made progress with paper. I think that went well. I don't know if if others disagree, but it sounded like we actually figured out the point around the sensitivity analysis. So it's like one thing kind well, of I think it was a lot of waffling around in irrelevancy, which is why I was uh why I was pushing back on it because the entire Well, that might be the case. I don't know. I I didn't listen to the whole thing super carefully. I did eat food during it. And uh yeah, okay. But yeah, anyway, it's not Sunday. So it's are questions they're asking me. Like, like, because I was asked if I thought it was a genocide. I my response was I don't know. I haven't looked into it enough. I'm looking into it now. It looks like it plausibly is a genocide from what they're describing it as. Really? So that's not really? the UN, not by the UN definition, my dude. Careful. Okay. By the UN? Oh, that I'd, I'd have to look into that. Then like I'd absolutely not by the UN definition that. because absolutely. you. Absolutely. Okay, maybe I haven't looked into the. Okay, then my answer is I haven't looked into the specific details in depth. To know if it matches the international the definition of genocide by international law, so maybe I would classify it if I were to I w as a contested genocide because um, when when I classify contested genocides is if there is um, historical scholars that would come to a consensus of genocide but legal scholars would not, then I would con classify it as a contested genocide. So maybe I would have classified the Uyghur genocide as a contested genocide based on that methodology. I'd have to look into it. The reason it didn't go into the project is because it wasn't a battle. Well, we actually already know why it didn't go into the project, and that's because last time we spoke, I asked you specifically if it was happening in Gaza was happening to the Jews in Nazi Germany, and no more. Would no, you would you defend what would you defend okay. what the Nazis are doing to the Jews? And you said no, because you were biased, which was honest of you. To your credit, I don't know yeah, why you would be honest I, in that case. Well, that's, but, but, but I would also, I also said that if some, but I also said that if someone were to present me the case, and I, I, I would, I would think I would be good faith enough to not make false claims or correct them if I was, if I was wrong about it. But not, but yeah, not, <laughs> but but not, is, but not good faith enough not to present not, the exact same graphs that you're presenting no, now, gonna, which no, portrayed in a positive light. Well, no, I, I don't think I don't think it would be likely for me. No, everyone has their biases. I'm no exception. I'm a yeah, human but typically being. when you typically when you avow cognizance of your biases, yeah. you don't just continue along as if you're fine. That would be a moral failing, right? Mm -hmm. You would address those biases, especially when it concerns okay. the lives of other people that are being just destroyed. Like, I'm an let me let me ask let me ask this, Sunday. Do you have more con like just while papers here? Do you have more concerns that relate to the statistical stuff, or is most of it kind of more about motives and stuff now? Because if there's more statistical stuff, we should talk about it while papers here. Well, my concerns are my concerns are about motives. Like the the statistics are are pretty much irrelevant. The the comparing conflicts by relative risk is if that determines, um, like whether or not a genocide is taking place is is, is clownish. The definition of a genocide involves the destruction of a people in a given location. It has no bearing as to whether or not the number of people killed 
uh, is, is, is slants in favor of most of them being militants or not. That's that's silly. It's a, no it's definition a, of genocide involves that. First of all, because who is a militant? A analytic, it's, this is level zero. It's not an analytic equivalence relation. It's a metric. Metrics have outliers. Sure, it doesn't mean you can't make inferences based off them. I'll let paper explain that one to you. What? Say that again. It's a metric. It's not set up as an analytic equivalence relation. I'm not saying a genocide is defined in terms of relative risk. I'm saying that You're genocide... say, you, you say, and and I'm quoting you here, you say that these these figures, and you specifically actually, you don't even refer uh, to the relative risk at, at the broader scale. You refer to that particular study. You say that this is the strongest argument for there not being a genocide going on in yes, Gaza. An right argument. Now. An argument doesn't have to be an analytic equi equivalence relation unless it's, it, it, it doesn't have to be like I'm defining the metric. It doesn't need to be that I'm defining the metric in an analytic equivalence relation. I could do, make an argument that doesn't define the, the metric as an analytic equivalence relation. Otherwise, you'd be tossing out all metrics in, used in science. Like, yeah, I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm defining genocides in terms of relative you risk. You started with that one before you even oh. added additional conflicts. You were using that as the basis for saying that there wasn't a genocide right. going on. Can you talk to a reasonable person to translate this firm? Paper, do you understand? Are you, is paper? Stop sputtering. <laughs> just breathe. Is paper there? I'm back. Okay. Um, paper, so, do you understand? Yeah. Do you, so, understand so, sorry, do you understand how, like, even the, though the, 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 I'm, I'm thinking it's not a genocide for science. But the, fuck off. Hey, wait. Okay, it's, I don't know what that was all about. Like, uh, fuck off. So, like, it, nobody, you, nobody, nobody in the real world buys this this so song paper, and dance. This so is paper, embarrassing. The so paper. Okay. So the thing is, I want to get to the stage of paper and Sunday talking, but that's only possible if we get through the stage of Avi and paper talking. So we, you have to stomach it, Sunday. You you must tolerate it. Avi, what were you saying to paper? Yeah, so Paper, do you understand that even though genocide is not defined in terms of relative risk analytically, that just like with any other other fucking thing in science, that you can make an inference based on a metric that may have outliers, that it's not, of course it's going to have outliers because it's not an analytic equivalence relation, just like any other outcome that can be used as a predictive variable, you can make a strong inference as a prediction model based on it even though it's not defined that way in terms of it being or not being the case. You understand that paper? Surely you understand that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Um, so I think, so I think this is where it's getting, I think a little more interesting because it gets, I think it's getting to like the heart of like the actual debate, but, but basically, yeah, the, the point that Avi's making Sunday is he's not saying that this is a definition, that this relative risk of a certain level is the definition of genocide. He's saying, hey, when you look at all of this data, you find when genocides occur, they tend to have these conflicts that don't have, you know, that have these very low relative risks. And that when you find these other conflicts that aren't genocides, they tend to have very, very high relative risks. I have a, me you know, I'm hypothesizing a model in which I think there is there, you know, you, you could you could come up with that whatever mechanism you want, but you're basically saying that you think there is this way in which genocides occur that is also hap you know, that's also occurring through this metric. And so, yeah, he's not saying that it's the same thing. He's saying it's like associated with or it's predictive of. If that makes sense. And so then the, the, the point or the debate is really getting into is this metric appropriate for the outcome? Is this the outcome we care about? Is it, you know, is there issues with comparisons? This gets into the more, like, I think, substantive part of, um, of the of the modeling, and and not the like the the statistical issue, or not like the other assumptions and things like that. That makes sense. I think I see President Sunday lighting up, but I don't think we can. I can't hear him anyway. I don't know if you guys can. Yeah, hear yeah, him. I can't hear you, President Sunday. Is he having some kind of. Okay, are we good now? Ghost? Hello? Now I yeah, can hear you. Now we can hear you. Yeah. 
Just bear with me here a second. What are you doing Sunday? I'm pulling up the initial tweets. I'm also uh, highlighting here. Jesus Christ. Fucking... I'm going to rename you Sunday. You're going to be Sunday Master of Receipts. That's funny. Yeah, I think it's good. I called Avi Extreme Sophist Avi. Does it really need a coma? Coma, Sophia? Is the siege of Lenin the siege of Leningrad considered a contested uh, genocide? On my know. understanding, yeah, there's there's some people who suggest that it is, or that it was rather. Okay, wait, uh, but I don't want us to lose the whole thing. The paper just said, like, pa paper just kind of asked, didn't didn't you ask Sunday something at the end of what you said there? Or? Well, it gets it gets into the interesting question, but then at that point, like now now we're just literally going through the thing and and asking like what a reasonable person would interpret from this wait but are there any contentions on what paper just said like we understand that like one can make an inference about whether something is or is not a genocide based on a predictive model that's not defining the metric in terms of what a genocide is like do we agree on that oh yeah that oh i mean i mean sure you can you can make an inference based on literally anything um, well, no, a, a strong inference a strong inference yeah. Well, that would that would depend on something, right? So here, here's a yeah, question but, for you, and then maybe this would be a little bit clarifying, and maybe it'll maybe it'll ameliorate my uh, my read on this whole thing. Um, what was your first? Uh, what was the first data point you generated for this? Would have been Iron Swords, right? Okay, wait. Just before that, I don't. I want to get to that Sunday, but I just feel like this point. This point's a, a straightforward point, like. You can have something that is a strong proxy for some other thing, but that's not actually literally a synonym for it, right? Like, whether Avi has achieved that here, let's, like, table that question, but surely that is something that can be done. Uh, can you use a different data point as, as, a, as a basis for inferring whether or not something is a genocide? You could have something that you're interested in. It could be yeah. genocide. It could be... I don't know, like the presence of a, a black dog. I don't, I don't know. It could be whatever. And you could have some other thing that highly correlates with it. And you're able to measure the thing that's like supposed to be highly correlated. Though the highly correlated thing is not a synonym for the thing you're trying to mess, uh, you're trying to measure or what Avi's saying. There's not an analytic equivalence relation. It's not literally the same thing, but there's a high correlation. So you can make a pretty stable inference about the presence of the thing you're trying to measure by measuring the, the thing correlated with it. That, that seems uncontroversial to me. Uh, yeah, whether I'll yeah. achieve that is a side point, but you agree with that in principle, though. Uh, in principle, yeah, sure. Right, okay. Now, whether whether it's the case that relative risk is a good proxy for genocide, that, that obviously you guys can debate, but we agree in principle that that kind of reasoning can make sense. So, yeah. Well, we're, <laughs> we're, we're getting into, into rather dicey territory here now, though. Um, primarily because if he's... If he's generated the explanation um, in advance of actually doing the the robust comparison, um, well, that begs some questions by itself. Le leaving aside the fact that I mean, the impulse even to try and compare them in terms of relative risk is itself extremely fraught for the reasons that we've already discussed. I don't know why on earth you would even use that as a baseline. Like, so for example, like one of the one of the things we're dealing with when we're dealing with contested versus uncontested genocides or versus conflicts that are not considered genocides at all by the UN say, um, is that they're being measured according to a definition that doesn't actually come from the original author of the concept. Um, it's being done by reference to a measure that was negotiated between powers, all of which are actively culpable in genocide at the time of signing on. Like, well, the reason I'm doing it based on the international law definition is just because that's what is it has. Really it has the veneer of objectivity. Bluntly, that's why it exists. Well, no, no. The re the reason I'm doing that is is because that's what Israel's on trial for right now. Like, there's three goals of the project. Really, it's like the well, first goal is to evaluate adherence to the principle of discernment. The second goal is to evaluate the probability of genocide as defined by the by international law, and the third goal is to compare. Um, the performance of relative risk compared to civilian casualty ratio. I mean, yeah, but you would never... Well, here, here's the problem, though. You would never, for example, 
judge a completed genocide as being equivalent to a genocide that's ongoing. Why? Well, for the simple reason that obviously there's going to be a massive discrepancy in terms of the, the proportion of the members of a target group being killed or displaced in a completed genocide versus a conflict that is being characterized as genocidal. So it seems so that, that you're necessarily blind by using this metric from any genocide that is ongoing, and you can only rank them once they've concluded, which defeats the entire purpose of catching them, right? So, so I don't, so I don't, so I don't agree with that, and I can go into reasons why. But before we go into, so, but that's a separate concern. I've addressed that concern multiple times as well, but it's a separate concern well, from the cliff I, notes. Yeah, the cliff notes is like what you can. There are certain, you can. What you can do is you can track the relative risk over time and so see. You're just repeating it, yourself. I, I, I get that. But that, that's that's bullshit. No, I, because... I didn't. I didn't repeat myself. I didn't talk about tracking relative risk over time. Uh, actually, the first that's the first time I've mentioned it in this conversation. So you can track relative risk over time and see how it trajects. And what you kind of what you sort of expect for there to be a, a genocide is the expectation would be that at some point the relative risk would radically decrease, not not just have a trajectory of increasing as time goes on increasing as time goes on that's an expect that's an observation that's less expected on the hypothesis that as time goes on it's, it's a genocide that's just not happened yet in it but it will at some point trust me guys no it's it's expected on oh it's just this is a combat that turned out to be very brutal at the start but actually it's it's transitioning into a phase where it's um even well, now, more now you're conflating now you're conflating a combat with a genocide so for example one of the wow. things that well, for example, like if, for instance, uh, the state of Israel's intentions were genocidal in the classical Nazi sense, and their goal was to corral the Gazans into a localized place and then kill them all there, um, you would see actually, uh, perhaps for the entirety of a conflict, uh, very, very low um, mil uh, c uh, civilians versus militants being killed. And then all at once at the end, you would see the conclusion of them being uh, very, very swiftly destroyed. And if you were comparing them at a previous point, even over a trajectory of time, it could appear relatively benign compared to another case where something uh, as as what you're trying to defend uh, may be taking place. Namely, it's just just a nasty situation. There's uh, an insurgency that's just lobbing bombs and they got to do something and they're just doing the best they can do and buildings are blowing up as a result. Like, that's, 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 a, that's a pretty big problem here. Like, the, these cases are not like, like th th there's, there's a total lack of symmetry here. So what I'm trying to evaluate is genocides that are subsumed within the context of an urban combat or urban conflict, which, and there are urban conflict. Yes. Urban conflict. It can be an urban battle. It could be an urban war. It could be an urban skirmish. It could be an urban, like, yeah, conflict. So, but you include yeah, Hiroshima yeah. here. Hiroshima's not Hiroshima an urban conflict. Urban, well, her, it, it, it's broadly defined as events. Uh, it's a bomb, like bombing. So, so events. events. Okay, so we're we're not talking about conflicts. Then you have to be careful. We're talking urban, about we're talking about periods that are, are defined by this well, has been I'm labeled defining, a conflict at some point I'm or something. Like that. To include, I'm defining conflict to include battles, skirmishes, wars. Bombing, bombing campaigns. But wars, wars right. can last for for decades, my dude. I, I understand it's a disjunction. It's a disjunction. I'm including event. I'm including bombing campaigns in in the in what I'm considering what I'm considering urban conflicts. It really, honestly, the Hiroshima thing really just uh, it it was just there because people were like, just, it's really just there for illustration. It doesn't actually affect the calculations because people just it's just a sanity check on the metric to say like, okay, we would expect a very low value. Let's if this is tracking what we expect, let's put it there. Anyway, um, the point here is just for for genocides that are subsumed within these sorts of events, we would expect there there are certain observations on the relative risk that we would expect on the hypothesis that eventually there's going to be a genocide versus eventually uh, there's not going to be a genocide. And the trajectory of the relative risk can inform us on that. If the relative risk stagnates and decreases, that would actually be an observation that's more expected on the eventually a genocide will happen hypothesis rather than if the relative risk is steadily increasing. Well, which is obviously more not. And here's here's the obvious case in, in, in the example we're concerned with here, Avi is that if the Gazans are expelled to a different country, iron swords will have concluded, and then if they all die, or a vast majority of them die as a result, that will not get factored into the relative risk of iron swords. It, it would. How? It, the iron swords will have concluded. Yeah. It's a different it event would. now. Like, perhaps, perhaps they get dispersed. 
for instance, right? And maybe something happens similar to what happened no. in Lebanon, where uh, the the I'm, I'm not suggesting it's impossible. Look, I'm not suggesting that if because the relative well, it's, risk it's not, is it's not just not impossible. Like there, there's there's no reason to think that this this correlation means anything. <clears throat> Like you have, no, you have nine well, eleven here, well, for example. What's the trajectory that of that? Well, that I don't agree with. I, that I don't agree with. I, I, I don't agree that it it doesn't suggest anything. Of course, it suggests something. Um, in a little bit. What? Could I, could I make a point. Could I make a point? Yeah, go ahead. Um. Yeah. So I, I, I think he, I think Sunday is. In, let me try to translate what Sunday is doing in a particular statistical argument. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of saying that the the deaths occurring from like a bombing campaign have a downstream effect or something that happens, you know, post the immediate conflict. And in your analysis, do you have some sort of like censoring event where you know you no longer start to count those deaths. Uh, if I may, like, that's not far? actually the issue. The issue here actually lies okay. precisely in the fact that he is very loosely equating conflicts with battles, with bombing campaigns, with wars. And the problem there is that now you're comparing a, a very short-term operation um, with uh, situations that that include such operations and those downstream effects farther farther on down the line. And so the comparison. Is, is sort of intrinsically tainted that way. It's like the Bangladesh Liberation War. You're going to compare that with what's happening in Gaza by itself? Like, that doesn't make any sense. The Korean War. Gaza is being compared with the entirety of the Korean War. Um, and and then down here, like Al-Qaeda, the September, September 11th attacks. Like, are, are, are we are we considering that to be the same uh, type of periodization as as like, the, the months-long thing happening in Gaza in the context of uh, the decades long thing happening in Gaza in the context of a century long thing happening in, in, in Palestine generally like this, this, this can only inflate and deflate the importance of, of relative instances. This, this says no, this doesn't add legibility to anything like at all. Like, like here, look, look at this. Um, so we have, uh, Swords of Iron, 2023 to 2024, months, months long. We have that, uh, we have that being juxtaposed with, let's see, um, <laughs> we have that being juxtaposed with the Rohingya genocide in its entirety, with the Bangladesh Liber uh, Liberation War, um, the Zanzibar Revolution, the Rape of Nanking. I'm surprised that one's actually slow. I thought that would be a lot. I would look at the rape of Nanking one again, buddy. Um, it's, the battle, it's the battle and rape of Nanking, to be clear. It's not just the rape of Nanking. Okay, okay. Um, still. Uh, Cambodian Civil War. Like, th these aren't comparable. That's like... Well, I agree they're not comparable. One, one, one is a genocide. The ones are genocide. No, no, no. Not, not, they're not comparable in terms of what took place within them. Let's run with that, okay? Let's say every single one that you've uh, you've ranked with a higher value is not a genocide, and every single one that you've ranked with a lower value uh, is a genocide. Um, it, it doesn't particularly matter because you can take um, multiple instances of iron of, of what happens in iron swords. It's more or less like just just copy and paste it into any one of these, and it wouldn't necessarily offset the outcome at all. Um, the, given some of these time periods and given the scale of some of these things, like you could have multiples of iron swords taking place within the Korean War, say, and and you would still have the same outcome that you do. Or yeah, within so uh, the sensitivity analysis that you can do, just looking at it, looking at first first you can check if there's a correlation between. Well, no, no, it's the, 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 you can't do a sensitivity analysis here because the question is not. Oh, really? the, no, 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 because th this is conceptually fraught at the outset. Th these are not comparable entities. You're you're comparing wars with like th this is a basic failure to distinguish for example between the strategic and the tactical levels of analysis as a as, as sort of a point of comparison like so we've already discussed this this is actually we discussed this this morning for the umpteenth time and yes the, there's there's a sensitivity analysis that you can do and we'd really not change it really yeah, so, so okay so so what sensitivity analysis would you do to make iron yeah. swords comparable to the entirety of the korean war no, it's not. That's that's what you're that's doing not, here. Not Relative risk of militant to civilian killed for urban combat. All right, this, 
confused on just a whole different level now. It's like well, when the when inference... you, when you have the Korean War here, for example, like okay. have you have you aggregated every single battle in the Korean War and averaged them out to get that figure that you're comparing? Mm -hmm. No, no, I have not, and that's actually not even relevant to the type of inference that's being adjudicated here. Well, the, the reason why you're putting a graph on Twitter is so that people have a shorthand thing to look at and say, well, look, this highlighted yes, bar, Iron Swords, it's not that bad compared to all of these things I've like conspicuously labeled cons contested and, and yeah, so, non-contested genocides. Yeah, so in terms of so in terms of in terms of sensitivity analyses for these concerns as they would affect the inference. <clears throat> If the concern well, it depends is, on what the inference is, because that's where you're bullshitting. The inference is the, inference is the probability of genocide on the, uh, expected on the given. It's the same thing we've been talking about. Yeah, that's stupid. You wouldn't you wouldn't use the relative risk so, of an isolated conflict yeah. of three months uh, to determine whether or not it's more likely to culminate in a genocide than a war that's been going on for years. Yeah, so I was about to address that with the proposed sensitivity and with the sensitivity analysis. So one thing, so there's two things you can do. One thing you can do is not a sensitivity analysis, but you can actually run a regression to see if the duration of the event has any correlation with the relative risk. Because if the idea is that your relative risk estimate is going to be off based on the duration of the event, if there's some relation to that, you can either adjust for duration of events, so you can control, you can adjust for that in, in a model, or hmm. Um, hmm. or what you can do is you can just now show stratify me where you've done this. You can strat. Or you give me two seconds. But have like, you done or this? Or you can it out. Um, so have I? Yes, I, I have. I have really? done that. And I. So the inclusion of the Korean War was only after you've uh, you, you've you've done this regression, right? The inclusion of the Korean War was no, that was before. <laughs> right. So why would you include it? Because you because you run a wait. Why did I include? Why did you? Because I'm it? an event that meets inclusion criteria. But why, for example, if you're comparing battles, would you not, for example, compare it with a battle in the Korean War? Why the Korean War as a whole? Oh, yeah, because there's an issue with... So, in terms of granularity... But this, is just, whether, this just seems like really basic. Like, why would you compare things that are completely unlike in order to, yeah, in order to draw a comparison <laughs> that gives the yeah, impression that these things are alike? Because that's what you do here. Yeah, I can answer, I can, I can answer that question. So... The, there's an issue with available data estimates. So uh, oftentimes what you'll find is that individual battles within a war don't have reliable estimates or don't have estimates at all. So you can just swap out the battle for the whole war, right? But, but in that and is for illustrative purposes. Well, that's the that's the problem because what you're illustrating is a discrepancy that you have no justification to make. But you can do a sensitivity analysis to see if that sort of different different inclusions of wars versus battles makes any meaningful difference. See, this is. And, and I'm sorry. Audience, I'm sorry. You don't think you don't in, think comparing wars versus battles. This is the difference. You, that between, is ambiguous to you. Like, are you insane? This is the difference. This is the difference between the good faith and the bad faith. Critique. Yeah, you're so you're you're a shithead who's using uh, graphs and lingo to obfuscate a, a really transparent, a really transparent and disgusting display of nationalistic cheerleading. Is this better? Is this better? The good faith critique is what the good better. Faith I can't hear you, Avi. You can't. Oh, hold on. You're bored. Um, um can you hear are you able to hear me am i now, now i can hear you yeah okay um input i don't know i do and i'm you sound fine microphone now. okay how's this am sounds, i good am i good beautiful. Okay. all right so yeah the the good faith critique would be hey there here's a factor i'm concerned about it seems like you're not comparing like with like can we do a sensitivity analysis for which we take out all the wars and just look at the battles only to whatever degree that inclusion of entire wars are going to affect the inference in this case it actually i don't even in, in this case um in this i'm case, actually being extremely generous already by the way because the comparison of battles is that there's a clear-cut uh, uh category oh this is a battle this is a discrete thing that doesn't involve like multiple different elements that have to be disambiguated i'm just letting you run with that but like you, you have things that are so wildly disparate from from what is understood commonly as, as a as a battle, quote unquote, that it's it, it's just it's shocking that you would that you would do this. Like th this would get you laughed out of a room 
Avi, well, I don't, I don't really think you understand how bad this is. Being, well, it really wouldn't because what's actually being done these days is doing the same thing with even an even worse metric in the in in the field. So, no, it wouldn't. Um, you so you would at least not at least not until not not as I would I not, would I would love I would if, God if you got this yeah. imagine imagine if you got this published in Foreign Affairs you would be eaten alive you wouldn't get published but just imagine. Oh, okay. We'll see who we'll see if I get published or not, <laughs> my, my dude. Um, anyway. I mean, if you got published, it'd be your funeral. I, I personally wouldn't recommend it. What do you? Oh, I mean, I don't know what you mean. Just by the that. bare the bare fact the bare fact that you would take the militant civilian death ratio okay. and compare it to the Korean War in order to make Israel what Israel's doing in Gaza right now look favorable. Okay, so you again, would be skinned again, alive, my they, dude. So again, the good fit with or without baking powder. So again, with. Uh, with the with the good faith critique, the good faith critique like here is be very quickly, very critique, cleanly. Vegan? The good faith critique here. No, it's sushi. Vegan sauce. Be... Sushi's not vegan. Okay. Well, some sushi actually is vegan. The good faith critique here. Not real sushi. Is, the good faith critique here is going to be. Hey, here's a factor I'm concerned that you're not comparing apples to apples. Can you do a sensitivity analysis where you compare apples to apples and run the model? The bad faith critique here is, hey, here's a factor I'm concerned about that you're not comparing apples to apples. Your model is garbage. Well, your avowal of bias already like makes makes your bad faith sort of apparent. I mean, here's here's what you would do if you were good faith, Avi. With every single with every single case that you brought up, you would isolate it to a similar time frame, and you would cut out ones that you don't have data for that don't meet that time frame. Or you would cut them out up to a certain point. It's like, hey, uh, this is how many this is how many people uh, this is how many militants for civilians were killed in four months here, and in four months here, and in four months here. You don't do that. You you, you don't have you don't have uh, parity between these these um, yeah, elements you know, either in terms of their duration, in terms of of their content, yeah, in terms risk. of what they are. Like you may as well just involve like a, a yeah, relative risk. Relative risk is more robust to the time frame than I agree. I actually do agree with that in terms of like raw numbers. Like some metrics are going to be not robust uh, and, and resistant to change by time frame of battle. So, for example, total casualties, that's the most obvious one. As the t time frame of battle goes on, obviously total casualties would go on. It would be very weird to compare. Well, it works in both. It works in both directions. See, because like, for example, one of the things, one of the things that happens when an entire population is expelled from a location at the end of, of, a battle, quote unquote, is that that population ends up somewhere else, maybe in a refugee camp. And maybe something like this happens. Uh, maybe the uh, military apparatus of the country that um, exiled that group of people, maybe they provide assistance to another group that then does a genocide, and that gets classified as a separate event. And then the first event is characterized positive favorably against that separate event. This is what happened in Lebanon, by the way. Yeah, um, I know. I, did, I actually ran that calculation and included those deaths by, with Sabra and Shatila in the um, t in the Lebanon War in uh, 1980. Uh, um, yeah, but you didn't, for example, include it as a part of uh, the the original expulsion of the Palestinians to those camps. I would imagine I mean, you're going to involve you're going to consider those to be separate events. And no, in a certain I, in a certain sense, obviously, that's sort of intuitively what you would do, except that what this actually becomes is an extended action of one group upon another group um, continuously over a longer period, which is obscured. For the record, I included Sabra Shatila deaths in the Lebanon War. I, I know you included it in the Lebanon War, but then my, my question would be, like, would you include it in the war that caused the expulsion of the Palestinians to Lebanon in the first place? Would you, are you talking about, are you, wait, are you talking about the Nakba? Are you talking about 1940? What, what are you talking about? Nakba, the Nakba. Oh, oh no, 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 that was like so. In t that was it's a few Yassir. decades, yeah. yeah. Like, no, no, that was a, that is a different event, and I have a, an event. I know, I, well, I know you would you would characterize it as a different event, right? It, and I, but I, but I listed it along with its relative risk of two point seven in genocidal territory. Dear, dear you see, nineteen forty eight by Israel. I, I, I know you do, but you're you're missing my point here. The point mm -hmm. is that by 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 using. This this fast and loose. I don't, I don't want to call it a categorization scheme. By by losing these by using these these fast and loose, uh, uh, like like periods, what, whatever the hell they are, because there seems to be nothing in common between them. Some of them are singular events that took place in a day. Um, I'm like like what what you what you've done is you've made it so that 
you can compare one of these, regardless of what it is, favorably to another one that took place over a massive duration, and also you can compare one favorably to another on the grounds that the effects technically happened after you've you've cut off the conclusion of that event. Like, that's... Like, yeah, like, in terms of events that like are going to happen like like decades later, you're right. I didn't include those. In terms of obvious, like in terms of the ones that are more straightforward. So for example, in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, yeah, they got deported from the battle zone, but they got deported to Auschwitz. So yeah, I included those. In terms of like the Saber Shatila massacre, that was very, very like, a, there's, there's a straight causal connection that's very, uh, that's temporally close. Well, there's a straight, there's a straight yeah. causal connection between the Nakba and, of, and the massacres it, in Lebanon. It, it, in terms, yes, th there may be, but I no, guess. No, th there, there is, be, absolutely. Yeah, okay. And that's fine. Like I could do if if that's really I don't know how much of this is the real issue. I can I can combine them if if you like. I mean, it's not going to change much of anything at all. But the, anyway, the point the main point I'd like to make is I think look, I think the project is only negative propagandistic value. I think I think well, what you're doing. No, is... I, we, we know that we know what you think about that. But the point. But the, to respond to what you've said, anytime you use a metric to make comparisons among different events, there's always going to be differences between those events. The question about how relevant those differences are is just going to be about how it affects those uh, the relative if it affects the metric at hand. So if you're going to say like, oh, well, there's some difference here that affects the metric, not because it's tracking what you're trying to track, but because of some other factor that you're comparing it to, then the question is, well, can we test for that? Can we adjust for that if it's true? And but so far, there's a lot of factors that have been brought up for this. And every time I run a regression for these factors, it turns out there's little to no correlation between these proposed factors and the actual metric at hand. So, but you haven't done I that mean, for the most egregious I mean, cases. I mean, what What do you mean? <laughs> you, but but I I don't see you where you're doing I mean, any of this or, or how you're how you're demonstrating this. I just see I just see lines. Look, this line higher than line over here, right, but line over here is Sudan War and Darfur. No, that's yeah, I know that that I understand you're seeing lines, but what I'm telling you what I'm telling you is the approach to what's what's going on in the testing that you're not seeing. And yes, I haven't published a paper, so no, you're not going to see my in, like an entire manuscript. That's and it's probably only going to be published. But if you're Twitter. publishing if you're publishing your findings on Twitter, there is no justification whatsoever for being opaque about how you're generating that data. Well, and not, just to put this I, just to put this into perspective for people who aren't familiar like I, with what I'm talking about here. Opaque. So okay. Iron Swords, Iron Swords has been taking place for a few months, right? Do you know how long, do you know how long the Darfur genocide went on for? We understand there's Avi, how long was it? It was many years. Take a guess. Um, it, it's, it was over, I think it was over 20 years. I, I think it was closer to like 11. Oh, sorry, you're right. Uh, it was from, let me see, um, 2003 to present. So it was around 20 years, February, 2000, February, 2000. No, no, it's not 11. It was, it's 20. Was it not? Was it? I was, um, Darfur genocide. At least on Wikipedia. Maybe I'm thinking, maybe I'm thinking, hang on, hang on. 23 February. No, oh, I'm no, thinking of this. Right. I'm fuck. I'm thinking of the civil war. God damn it. More than, wait, I, it is. No, more than case 20. in case in point. Yeah. Yeah. So case, case in point. Sorry. I was, I was, uh, it was, it was just over 20 years. It was 20, it was 20 years in a few days. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. was actually a very accurate estimate. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, well done. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so you're comparing a 20-year conflict to a, to four months with no, with yeah. no, with no disambiguation. Like, you, you don't break it down. You don't like. No, it's not that I don't break it down. The, again, the the issue is if your concern is there's a difference in the. Oh, by the way. Um, the concern the, is. Yeah. I, Go on. Look, if your concern is there's a difference in the duration. Look, all these are concerns of breaking down. Here's a factor that's not like with the comparisons. Yes, obviously these, these there are things that are going to be certain demographic characteristics of the battles or the wars that are going to be different. The question is. Do those differences affect the estimate in ways that are not tracking what I'm trying to track in the first place? And if the answer to that just empirically turns out to be no, then actually that's not going to affect the inference. So there are certain metrics that... that well, to put I this into perspective for you, the estimated deaths on the high end for the Darfur genocide were 400,000. Okay? Yes. 
Okay, yes. do you know what I get? Do you know what I get if I multiply 20,000 by 20? Yes, and I agree that there are metrics. If you were to just listen to what I was about to say, I agree with you that there are metrics that are very sensitive to duration of battle. What you're doing right now is one of those metrics, total casualties. I agree. And I agree that if I were doing total casualties, it would be very sensitive. But why are you including 20-year long wars if you're not doing total what casualties? I'm not convinced of, what I'm not convinced of is that the relative risk metric is going to be sensitive to it because it's just a ratio of militants to civilian skills, which can be very, very, very resistant to change across as the battle goes on um, just because of time itself or duration itself. Where well, I mean, well, I slow down, Cowboy, because you, you include things, for example, like 9-11 and Hiroshima, right? That alone uh -huh. should give you a little bit of pause there, because obviously in a very short time span, you can have a vast escalation in the number of civilians killed versus militants. Yes, you can. I'm not contesting with that. The point, is, um, the point I'm making is just, again, the question is, is the, is the metric sensitive to this duration because of the duration itself and factors related to the duration other than what I'm trying to track? Or... Is, well, no, is, well obvi obviously not for the simple reason that you haven't broken them down at all. So, for example, when we're talking about the 20-year the Darfur genocide, um, you haven't broken this down in, into, like, different specific conflicts so that in the midst of all of this, you're comparing what's happening in Gaza to somewhere where l large stretches of time are taking place where nothing's happening at all. Well, again, again, I don't see how that's a, a, how that's showing that. Look, when you, I don't know what you mean when you say I haven't broken it down. If I run a regression on the relative risk and duration of Jesus. time of the events, and there's no correlation, then that's telling me, then that's telling me that time in and of itself is does not appear to be a factor to which relative risk as a metric is sensitive to. Well, do you? <laughs> I do that with total casualties. There is a clear well in, in in the in terms of a conflict, quote unquote. Do you do you start okay. Iron Swords with October seventh, or do you start no. Iron Swords with the Israeli offensive? The Israeli offensive. Why 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 do you separate them? That's how virtually everyone separates them when they do this analysis. But I'm asking why you're separating them because we're not, not we're not we're not because if you're if yeah. you're trying to make a comparison that's fruitful mm -hmm. in terms of what it tells us about this conflict versus other conflicts, then you need to tell us how these are actually like other conflicts. Yeah. No, I can, I can formally, tell you like that. in terms of like what, what actually, what actually is the, the composition of these things. I can tell you my motivations for separating them. My motivation for separating them is for separating them allows me to evaluate the Israeli performance in, in Gaza rather than just a very high performance that would have taken place in Israel when they defended uh, the towns that well, were that's attacked. going to be that's going to be a bit of a problem for you then, because if you're including, for example, twenty year long conflicts, what if amidst all of that, something you haven't paid attention to is that there there were counter offensives, maybe by the target group, maybe maybe by other groups on behalf or adjacent to the target group. Yes, like there could the, have been so many. There could have been so many different little October seventh taking place within that. That's actually a strength and not a weakness, because that actually would result in the relative risk being. Um, so that's a, that's a strength and not a weakness because if I were to account no, for the, that, the problem the problem is that you're not actually well, assessing the relative the problem is you're not assessing the relative risk of a conflict you're assessing the relative risk of a region can you let me can you let me answer you you if went concern, you went like muffled for a second there sorry go on yeah if the concern I don't know if I'm muffling I don't know what if my mic is audible but if the concern is the if the concern is doing something like that that tends to result Adjusting for that tends to result in a lower relative risk. When you separate it out, you get a lower relative risk, not a higher relative risk. So what would happen if I were to do that is the genocides would just have a lower relative risk, not a higher one. And my inference would actually be stronger. It wouldn't be weaker. So I'm actually giving a steel man by including those things. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to translate this to you. Um, <laughs> like once again, like the war in Darfur could have many, many instances within it that have the mm -hmm. exact same content as mm -hmm. Iron Swords. Okay, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. But if those are being offset by 
several spread out over a long period of time, several events that are vastly in excess for whatever reason, then your, 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 your figure here is in real danger of not being representative because you're not actually comparing two like things. You're comparing, you would be, it would be, for example, it would, it would, for example, be like comparing, uh, Israel's performance in Iron Swords, uh, mm -hmm. going back like five years, say, and just extending the length of that backwards in time for five years yep. and saying, look, look how few over, over like this span of time, over, over the course of this, so this thing. Ways, yes. There's two ways I can address this. So the first, the first way is by pointing out that if the, what I said before, which I already addressed it, which is if I were to do that, the relative risk of the genocides would go down, not up. And the other way of addressing it is to say, I actually can do that by doing it with Israel. I can look at Israel's performance over the last 20 years and, and actually give you a figure. And it would still, the inference would still hold. So all of these concerns that you're bringing up is not going to change. I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry. The, the inference that the relative risk The for... inference, yeah, the inference that the, the, the uh, updated prior on the genocide claim, uh, claim is going to be very, very low. I'm sorry, like, okay. But you understand, like, what you what you're effectively doing is akin to if there was an atomic bomb dropped on Tel Aviv, uh, and That's not oh, Jesus Christ. The atomic bombing campaigns are not part of the genocide inference. I don't know why that's even being brought up. That's the atomic for, bombing campaigns aren't... That's not part of the genocide inference. That's there. That's most... I'm that's not... There. I I'm, wasn't talking about an atomic bomb campaign. The, the, the point is, like, the periodization here being so sloppy and so <laughs> loose allows you to basically expand and contract as you need to encompass the things that give you the results that you want. You know, I have a decision-making rule for, like, what, how I do that. Well, it appears to be literally just what people name a thing, but that's not sufficient. So, for example, the, the Iron Swords is in the context of the Israel-Palestine War, right? That's that's different. Iron Swords is... The purpose of looking at Iron Swords is to look at Israel's performance as it is in Gaza. That's why almost everyone's, everyone yes. who does... And you're, what you're literally saying with this graph is that by comparison, it ranks really well compared to the entire twenty-year war in Darfur. And it would look, and it would look even better if I included October seventh. And it would also be, t and it wouldn't look worse to the point where the inference doesn't hold if I included the t last twenty what do you years. Mean, of why would it? Why would it look better if you included October seventh? I'm confused. Because their performance on October seventh was off the charts. Their relative risk was like in the th is over a thousand. I'm, I used sorry, to so, have I'm sorry, so you're specifically talking about the IDF uh, killing of Hamas. Yeah. The because IDF they're only killed... targeting an offensive party. Yes, exactly. If I included that, their performance would be amazing. Uh, In fact, I can show you what the well, numbers well, were. Well, not, not, not really, but it would, it would help you. Yes, really, yes, mathematically. No, I no, in basic... the context of October 7th taken by itself, sure. No, if you included, if you included the numbers in October 7th, the relative risk <sighs> would just radically increase if you combine that with the current war. I, no one could dispute that. You would just basically add, you would add the 1,609 militants to the militant population and to the kills. Like, that just increases well, the that, Yeah, but you're looking at a difference between 12,000 and 13,000 at that point. It's not a... I understand, but you would... It's not it would that massive. Yeah, I know, but you're, you, you're, you're using language that kind of inflates what it would be. Like, I... I I don't really know. Well, I can tell you what it would be right now. I mean, in terms, and you can judge if I'm inflating it or not. What? So if I no, I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit. It could be, it could be double. That's not the point. The point is once again, like you're you're including things and excluding things from your analysis of these different cases on the basis of literally this is a named thing. This is what's well. The basis is not. It's a named thing. Well, I give you but it is though because the the only thing in common between. Yeah. 
between the war in Darfur, Iron main, Swords, and Hiroshima is that they are named events. The main, the main purpose, the main purpose, no, it doesn't matter. I used to combine I, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It didn't matter. I could combine. The main point here is it doesn't matter which approach I take. It doesn't No, no, you don't end. understand what I'm saying. It doesn't matter if you separate Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You are comparing unlike things here. Some of which are the discrete dropping of like a single piece of ordnance, some of which are genocides that take place over twenty years. And if you're going to say that over, a, if you're going to say that over a twenty-year period, why am I wasting my time? Okay, look, the, the, these oh, these things you're talking about. Well, are this not is this is really simple. Like the, the after effects of what's happening in Gaza, for example, the cutting off the cutting off, for example, of of, of virtually. Uh, all access to to basic resources, where now we have news reports coming out of IDF soldiers shooting crowds of people waiting for food. Um, the mm -hmm. after effects of that are allowed to play out in the longer case of Darfur. They have not been allowed to play out in the case of Gaza. And I can I can and that's why I'm saying it is possible. I'm not denying the possibility that it that if the if the no, but the, this 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 is why I'm taking issue with this. While this is actively taking on right, while this is actually go, while this is actively going on right now, you are providing mm -hmm. graphs to the public to show, hey, it's okay. At the precise moment when the people uh, with the uh, power to stop or to control, like what kinds of bombs are falling where or whatever, those well, that's not what you're doing, and you're ignoring all the statements I've made to the contrary, and you're ignoring the spaces the I was in with God the water, and you're ignoring the. I'm ignoring your what? Sorry, say it again. And you're ignoring the space. That, you're ignoring the fact that I signed a petition encouraging Israel to do more to allow more water into Gaza. You're ignoring all the advocacy I've done. You, you signed. You signed a petition for Israel to allow more. Good. Good for you. Good for you. You're but then, but then, simultaneous to that, you produced a graph that tells people, "Hey, guys, the critics of, of the critics of Israel saying that they're not being careful when they're bombing these cities, explicitly saying that they want to maximize damage, not pursue precision." Yeah, they're all crazy, guys. This is cool. This is actually one of the. This is one of the most humane wars in the history of mankind. That's that's. Well, now you're misrepresenting what I've what I what I'm saying and what I've been. I'm not misrepresenting style. what you're saying. That is what you're saying. You absolutely. That is that is objectively I, what you are clear. saying with this. Well, then you know what? Let me be very clear now. Just I've, as I've been met very clear publicly on other space, on other space, and other other streams. You condemn what? the killing of twenty thousand civilians under a policy that doesn't uh, that that pursues mass damage in a civilian project, center over precision. The project. You condemn that. The project. The project That's a simple question. Do I can? Do you I, I, do you I, condemn the killing of twenty thousand people under a policy that pursues maximum damage versus precision in a civilian center? Oh, I absolutely do condemn that. I just don't think Israel's doing that. You don't so think Israel? You don't think Israel pursued a policy of mass destruction over precision in Gaza? This is explicitly what they have said, by the way. Of maximum damage over precision? No, I don't. Maximizing think, I don't, damage over precision. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that that that's what they done. You're I, not paying I, I attention, grab, then clearly. Okay, okay cool. Now that I've answered your question, let me be very clear about. Let me be very clear about uh, the purpose. Quote: of the IDF project. spokesperson. We're focused on maximum damage. Yeah, I don't think the evidence translates into that's what. I, yeah, I mean they've made space. <laughs> like I don't. Again, I don't think the evidence translates into that's what they're doing on policy. But it maximum as long as. But it, li it literally maximum. does. They've they've leveled cities. I don't think that. They've leveled think... cities and cut off water and electricity. That I is not precise, I, right? That's maximizing it. damage. It is, it is. It is the damage is so maximized that that's you have I, you have people yeah. now talking about resettling the entire region. Two million people. Yeah. I, I, no, I think that I think we have a different notion of what maximizing damage means. Then, but anyway, like the what? purpose. I want to be very. Clear what would be required for you? A nuke? No. What would be, what well, what what more what more would they do if they were maximizing damage by your yeah, metrics? Yeah, I think ma maximizing damage. Well, well, for one, I would expect the relative risk to be very different. Two, I would expect the why? total times. Why? Because there would be much. There would, because maximizing damage would mean that there would be more. Um, that there would be more, far more civilian deaths. Uh, which is another metric I would look at, and that would affect. Well, the, the civilian road. deaths once again, like if we if we maintain a consistent trajectory oh, over total. time, are equivalent to the Darfur ma or to the Darfur genocide over twenty years. I would ex I would expect it to be. Far and that's by the way, by the way, that's giving your extremely low estimates of the actual number of civilians killed. Well, wait a minute. When you say 
I, I lowered 20, it to 20,000. The high-end estimates whoa, whoa, of the Darfur whoa. genocide, this is the highest, are 400,000. 20 years. Wait, that's the duration wait, of the Darfur genocide, right? Wait, not, not, 20 not times like, 20. Wait, hold on. As a percentage of the population, Darfur was much higher. Yeah, Darfur but that's population. relative to the size of the population, right? Yeah. So what yeah. you're saying, what you're saying is that you would accept 10 times this amount so long as there were 10 times more Gazans to replace them, right? To accept These pe pe of... people aren't people, dude. They're in a bucket. I don't even know why you're a vegan. You clearly have no fucking morals. Like, what, what is this? Accepted in, ter accepted in terms of being morally okay with it, no. Accepted in terms of saying something like, "Oh, maximum damage." You, you damage. saying, you saying, I, I, I decry war is is not interesting to me. When the de facto import of everything you're doing here is to provide an apologia for one, there's literally like, no other reason to do this. Like what, to what is the purpose? What is the purpose, Avi? What is the purpose, Avi, of insisting to the public at large? That what Israel like is doing is not as bad compared to a genocide. The only like reason would be is to offset critiques of it as they are bombing them right now. So I'd like to be clear about the three purposes of my project and what they. I don't are care about the purposes of your project as you state them. Okay. Well, it, well, if, I think you've missed. No, you're an untrustworthy source. Okay. Cool. So I just. Cool. We're agreed. No. <laughs> really? So, just, so when you when you said last time that I you would didn't. not you would not be doing this project. In pursuit of defending a party that you dislike, uh huh. That doesn't whether I yeah, yeah that doesn't mean I'm an untrustworthy source. No. Well, it actually kind of does. No, no, it kind of does all. because it suggests that you're not actually motivated by a pursuit of the truth. You're motivated because of because this be is team sports for you. I could be motivated by a pursuit of the truth and just not be motivated enough to be. To no, you're to motivated by contempt of Arabs and and love of the Israeli state. Right. Just like you would be motivated in the case of, if, if this exact same case happened in Nazi Germany, you would be motivated by condemnation of the Nazis and, and the reverse. Which, you, want to clip me you know, probably a well-founded one. I've already got the clip. It's it's over. That part's you want to, done. You want to put me saying I want to drink Palestinian blood too? Is that what you want? Like, okay. Like, no. What, what do you want? Me to I like genocide-flavored Starbucks. What do you want me to say? Okay. Now, to the room, since this, product, this conversation is... Like, I mean, I don't think Starbucks is vegan, are they? There's plenty of vegan Starbucks. What are you talking about? Are there? Yes. Oh, well, I stand corrected. You know, anyway. Avi drinks Starbucks. We've got him twice. Yeah. All right. Well, the purposes of my project are several fold. Uh, there's three specific questions it seeks to answer. Um, the questions it does not answer is the moral status of an operation or a battle or a war. Well, that's where you're wrong, because you're not stating the moral status of a battle or a war is irrelevant. Someone just asking questions about how many people could have actually been killed in the Holocaust is not morally neutral, Avi. Okay, maybe I'll clarify the purposes of my project. I don't care about the purposes of your project. I'm telling you outright, like, what the effect will be, and you're smart enough to know what it is. Somebody's saying, somebody's saying, hey, look, guys, I'm just a mathematician. I'm just a statistician. I'm just asking questions about how many cookies could be baked in this many ovens. That is not a morally neutral claim or a morally neutral figure to present. Presenting black-on-black -black crime statistics is not morally neutral. Like, I'm sorry, you saying that there's no additional context, therefore you just get to rewrite what the effect of this is? That's irrelevant. Well, I think it's very clear that you don't care about what the purposes of my project are. No, I know what the purposes of your project are. I don't care about your your, your sophistry you defending it. <laughs> I but uh, to, just, just so I can clarify to the room without being interrupted, hopefully, about what they are and what they are not. I've been very clear that it's not about... Uh, it doesn't provide a means of assessing the overall moral performance. <clears throat> it doesn't say that necessarily war crimes were not committed or crimes against humanity were not committed. Uh, it also doesn't, uh, it, what, what it does is it answers three questions. Uh, the first question it answers is it can provide a inference to what, uh, prob what probability given relative risk is expected on the hypothesis that a genocide is taking, uh, has happened or is taking, uh, and it could, and the trajectory of the relative risk over time can give an inference of what, uh, what is expected if it's going to eventually happen, or whether it's less likely to go uh, to eventually happen. And then the second thing that it does is it provides an evaluation as an overall average of performance of adherence to the principle of distinction, that is, as it pertains to killing militants over... Okay, look, look, that's, that's irrelevant because you don't care about the science, otherwise you wouldn't include then, the Darfur genocide... In, in a comparison with uh, cases that lasted a mere span of months, here's what here's what your here's what your study actually does. It inserts the idea. It inserts the idea. 
by way of using relative risk as a metric indicating whether a genocide is taking place, that you can determine whether a genocide is taking place by whatever metric you are using, because most people aren't going to bother to read this shit. They have a motivated reason for accepting it, which includes every single person who has shared it up to this point, because you have not been transparent about how you generate your data at all, which is the only reason why they would therefore share it. Moving on from there, moving on from there, it then now can be used, that graph, that comparative graph, can then be used to tell people, hey, what Israel is doing is actually okay. Every single thing they are doing that people are criticizing, they're nuts. Israel's being as careful as possible. Look, look at this graph. That's what you're doing, Avi. And then the third thing that my project does... I don't give a shit. Good night. 